news today. Why not have Northwest weather? It's wet, it's raining, it's windy, it's gray, and the Ducks are in town to take on the dogs. Seems appropriate, doesn't it? In fact, I think it's raining sideways today. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're dry up here in the press box, all four of us. It's football by committee today. Coach Don James on the far right of me, Chuck Nelson, and with the Oregon Ducks, the voice of the Ducks, Todd McKim. And Todd, you've got a team with a lot of momentum right now. A big victory last week, Don, against Arizona State, a game they needed to have. Uh, Oregon traditionally... <laughs> Don Poyer along with Todd McKim, Chuck Nelson, Coach Don James. The Oregon Ducks coming in with a 4-2 and two record to take on the 4-2 and two Washington Huskies. Oregon again coming off that big victory over Arizona State down in the Valley of the Sun. Coach Rich Brooks now in his 17th year. This is actually his 125th conference game as the head coach at Oregon. Just a year behind Terry Donahue as far as the dean of the Pac-10. And the youngster, <laughs> even though he's been a coach of the Pac-10 longer than anybody else in 20-some years, in his first year as the head man, Jim Lambright now with that 4-2 record that we talked about. The series, it goes way back. This is the 87th time the Ducks and Huskies have gotten together. Rich Brooks against the University of Washington. Washington and the last win a lot of us remember back in 1980 34 to 10 and I think Don James who's with us up here probably feels a little bit safer than he did last year when he got blindsided accidentally on the sideline you're safe this time Don you're up here with us yeah it was a cheap shot uh, <laughs> <laughs> career ending injury yeah. <laughs> Washington won the toss but they deferred so Oregon has chosen to receive it is raining steadily now. It is a good old-fashioned Northwest day. Wet, a little windy, dark. The field lights already taking effect. As you see the Oregon receivers back, more than likely Burwell along with Philia or Ricky Whittle. And it'll be Jason Kraft kicking off for the Huskies. A little different for uh, Oregon in terms of weather, Todd, after being down in Arizona last week. Well, it rained down there, too. It just wasn't uh, as cold. A little, a little warmer. warmer. Here we go. Ball being held by a Husky. It'll be Whittle back in his own end zone. Got to go now. Fumbled it out into the playing field and is up to the 14, and a flag goes down immediately. Whittle had no choice but to pop out of the end zone after fumbling the ball when it went out into the playing area. Down, you see where that flag was coming from right to left, and it was going out to the left. And, uh, excellent hang time, of 4-1-3 on that. Uh, probably would, would have been a little better to stay in the end zone there. I think once the ball came off of his chest, he wasn't sure whether he could stay in the end zone. Huskies have had some good luck with those. Oregon slapped with a holding. It'll be first down. Ball is back halfway to the goal line, so they will start, it looks like, first and ten from their own seven-yard line as Danny O'Neill, the leader in total offense, he's just having a banner year, the best any Oregon Duck has. In fact, he had a four-game period there. He was better than anybody in the history of Oregon football, Todd, as you well know, covering the Ducks. Yeah, well, he's now had the best six-game period than anybody's <laughs> ever had. He's thrown for 1,800 yards, 300 a game. That's pretty impressive numbers, but uh, he hasn't faced the, the kind of defense he's going to face today yet. First and ten. Ball on the seven-yard line as we get things going. They're going into the wind now, keep in mind. Pass immediately is complete. Out to number six, Kristen Mecklemore. Let's look at the starters for the Ducks as they come into Seattle. Of course, Danny O'Neill is in there at the starter with those 14 TDs and only six interceptions and 1,800 yards. Burwell, one of the leaders in the Pac-10 in rushing, as Malapai will play fullback. Ricketts, Mecklemore, and Willie Tate. And up front, Steve Harden out of nearby Snohomish. Heath Howington, Tom Curran, and Afonso Stark, rest of the folks up front. And they have developed very well. They've come along under Rich Brooks' guidance extremely well, that offensive line. Second down and one. Good pressure. Interception. Lawyer Malloy in his first career start. Flag goes down as he is tackled on the 15-yard line. But the pressure on O'Neill probably... We'll see who it was, but it was a great interception and great pressure on O'Neill. Two flags down, we understand. Well, Fontaine had the pressure up the middle. He came through with a big, strong pass rush. Interesting call, second down and short. Oregon thought the Huskies would play run defense. Oregon decided to throw the football, and they end up with the interception. 
and and look what Jim Lambright had on on defense. He had the he had the blitz coming, uh, both inside linebackers. And uh, uh, Rich Brooks is telling uh, Washington they're going to throw the ball regardless of the weather. And Jim said we're going to rush regardless of the coverage. I would imagine the number one responsibility for Washington's front the seven this week is put heat on O'Neill. Oregon has not been able to run the ball consistently. Well, they had success last year. You know, they had six six turnovers last year, which really helped. Six turnovers and six sacks. Here, the official explaining one of the two flags or both of the two flags, both personal foul penalties on the Huskies. Field position very good originally, and then you march off 30 yards worth of penalties. From the 15. Well, that's goodness. from the point of the interception. Yeah, actually the point of infraction or yeah, back to the 50 yard line. Yeah. One penalty was a dead ball foul. DeMarco Farr getting into it with Danny O'Neill and an Oregon offensive lineman trying to protect Danny O'Neill well after the play is over. You get an interception, run it back inside the 20, and now you got a first down on your own or on the 50. Once again, opportunities gone by. First and ten with two receivers to the left. It's going to be Kaufman trying to get to the outside. And Oregon knows this offense as well as anybody. No gain to speak of at all. One of the leaders getting in there, Alex Molden, number one, a cornerback. And Damon Ewart starting at quarterback with that padded flock jacket around him this season, around 1,100 yards. Joe Krolik to start. Been a quiet year for Joe so far. Janowski not starting. Actually, Theron Hill with Mark Bruner at tight end. And then Pearson, Peterson, Patrick Kessey getting his first start. He's going to be one of the main men next year and in the future. So some good experience for the young man now on second down and 11. Two to the, lo to the left, one to the right, and goes to Hill in his first start as it is complete to the 46-yard line. And again, it is Molden on the stop. It's a three-step drop here and uh, opportunity to look at the defense now of, uh, of the Oregon Ducks. As you see Gary Williams, he's actually here despite the angle injury. Malapai and Romeo Bamison, he's also banged up with a short, sore shoulder. The rest of the linebackers, Ernest Jones, very good, has a number of sacks and TFLs. Dante Lewis back there and Coda, the Pac-10 player of the week last week for his efforts against Arizona State. They're down in five. To the outside intended for Bruner and nearly picked off by Coda, who already has four interceptions, second in the Pac-10. Well, this is what the pre-pressure look does to the quarterback. Uh, Damon thought he was going to get a blitz. He checked off, kept everybody in. You see all his protection, and it's only a four-man rush. So, uh, and again, pretty good coverage out there by Chad Coda on your interception. See any sense of soreness to the ribs? The pass a little off target, Don. Well, you know, he uh, he thought he was probably going to get a rush. He had a lot more time than he, than he really thought he was going to get. Wardell back to punt. Now fifth in net punting are the Huskies, and it'll go into the end zone. As Brian Brown will not get a chance to return it. A punt of 45 yards, no return. The ball will go to the 20. Well, Oregon dodges a big bullet early uh, thanks to the penalties against Washington and then the defense cell. But when you throw an interception deep in your own territory on the first series and the opposing team gets no points out of it, you got to feel a lot better. Uh, especially the defense. It's uh, a little bit maligned, as you mentioned, and uh, they come off the field and scoreless in that situation. That's a big lift. First and 10 on their own 20 yard line. As Oregon will again start with two receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll keep it on the ground with Burwell. Pretty good first down yardage up to the 24 yard line. Steve Springstead in there on the tackle, defensively for the Dogs. As you see, Mr. Butler in there as well. Fontaine with the pressure on O'Neill earlier. Trevor Highfield at the nose tackle and DeMarco Farr. And the linebackers, Devers, his first start, along with Richie Chambers out of Lake Stevens. Springstead and Hillary Butler, the anchor. Lawyer Malloy, his first start, now at free safety. Lewis Jones, those two really playing well, as well as their backups, the more Lions and, and uh, David Kilpatrick. 
Ball is still complete to Deadweiler. First down up to the 40. Gets away from Lawyer Malloy. Finally down at the 47-yard line. And a flag down back on the line of scrimmage. And O'Neill is down on his knees and, well, back to his feet. But may have taken a shot. Well, you're right. He's taken two shots already. Four offensive plays for Oregon. And Danny O'Neill's taken two big shots. He can't do that every other play. Lewis Jones off the uh, backside. And uh, uh, he was throwing out to another receiver. Uh, Oregon got a... Uh, Break there, and that's just a, tor a terrible call. I agree with that, you. That's one of the worst I've ever seen. I, he, I he can't just I can't believe that that you could call Lewis Jones. Oh, that's what they got him for—the extra little bit to yeah. maybe spin him around. But the, the initial contact was nothing wrong. With I, I still can't believe it. When you're, you've got a quarterback wrapped up. There's no rule that says you can't take him down. Well, when you're when you have made contact and you've got your face in the guy's under the guy's chin, you don't know where the ball has gone. You don't know if he's thrown it or not. Huskies penalties once again. Well, penalties are one thing, but you know when you get a bad call, you know it, it's bad enough if you you've caused it. But uh, well, that's incredible. There. First and ten. O'Neal looking to the right all the way and wants to go deep into the wind. Lewis Jones there defending. Interception. Russell Hairston as the intended receiver, Deadweiler. It was not able to hold down. It bounced around in right place, right time. Have you seen a wilder start? No, no. And this is incredible. <laughs> well, that ball could have been initially intercepted because it hung up in the air, but because the receiver knew where the ball was, McLemore has a chance to make the catch on the comeback. He's got it. It hits his shoulder pad, and great reaction by Hairston. Yeah, most receivers will make that catch. The uh, ball is also a little wet today. You yeah. just don't. We talked about. Well, look at our camera. Ooh, it's wet we talk about too. coverage, too. But uh, get around the football, and good things will happen to you. So it's first and ten. I correct myself. That was McLemore, not Deadweiler, on that deep pass route. Kaufman pops it through into the secondary. First down up to the 19 yard line. It looked like uh, the Ducks may have been offside. I guess they got back, but uh, that's you know that's what the Huskies have to do every week against every team. They have to be able to run inside. Any team has to. But the lead jock by Matt, lead block by Matt Jones inside on Asher. Napoleon Kaufman hits the hole, follows Matt Jones up and inside. Nice way to get off of your own goal line. First down yardage. Jeff Sherman with the tackle. Oregon in rushing defense, fifth in the conference, allowing just over 105 yards. Hill in motion on first and 10 from the 19. Banging up in the uh, backfield. And hopefully had trouble written on it from the beginning. That's another busted play in the backfield. Uh, again, the coaches will sort that out when they grade the film. But uh, Pat, uh, Jeremy Ash is having a great year. He was a highly recruited player. Uh, very highly one of those uh, prized recruits out of the Portland area. And, you know, he's got to get away from Matt Jones most of the day and try to find uh, Kaufman. That, that's a tough assignment because with Kaufman's speed, if you don't get off that inside linebacker right away, he's by you and, and he's you, gone. You have to play your leverage. You have to force the play <laughs> back into your team. Uh, and, and Napoleon got outside on Jeremy that time, but last time. Jerry Williams with some nice penetration from the defensive tackle spot on the last play. Second down and nine. With a single receiver to the right. Hoffman again trying to go off left tackle. Keeps his feet very nicely as he gets up to the 26 yard line. Jeff Sherman again, the free safety. The backup to Dante Lewis knocks him out of bounds. Once you get off the fullback, then you have to try to tackle the ball in it. And there, Jeremy Asher did everything he was supposed to do, but at the line of scrimmage, Kaufman with that speed, and he also has great strength as well. So, you know, it's tough uh, defending Kaufman. Oregon would like to squeeze the field on him today if they could. Try to force him to the inside as much as possible where you have more help. And if, if his longest run isn't any longer than what it's been so far, they'll be okay. But uh, where he gets shows if he can, can snap one. And he hasn't broken uh, as many this year. His longest all year at 26 yards. It's third down and three. Kaufman, little spin move, and he won't get it. Nice pursuit on the part of several people. Ernest Jones, one of the first there, along with Romeo Banderson with the initial hit. We've talked so many times about how penetration can disrupt an offense before it even has a chance to get going. Obviously, Napoleon Kaufman starts to make a move before he even gets the handoff. Cannot get to the point of attack. Madison, nice to have him healthy for Oregon fans. 6'5", 285 senior. One of those guys seems like he's been there forever. He made a nice inside move, too, on the Huskies. Wardell's punt, a low one. Husky roll. 
Up to the 45 yard line is Brian Brown, who is averaging just over five yards per return. And we've got a timeout, 10 27 here in the first quarter, and no score. Good punt by John Wardell with the wind to his back. That's got to hurt. Good field position, first and 10 on the 46 of Oregon. O'Neill, who's had two hits already, there comes DeMarco Farr as he brings down Sean Burwell. DeMarco Farr having a field day on Steve Harden. Much as Vanderson broke up the last Husky offensive play, DeMarco Farr does a number on this one. Dumps back inside Harden and Heath Howington. We see the tackle came down and the guard pulled around and uh, DeMarco was just too quick for the tackle to get down and, and get the block. Jamal getting a piece of him as well. That is number 11 in terms of tackles for loss for DeMarco. Second and 15, back now on the 41. Strange game so far here in the first quarter. A lot of room for O'Neill to run. Gets to the 49-yard line, still well short of the first down. They need to get down to the Husky 44 as Steve Springstead closed in on him. We can see the heat again, but O'Neill has done a better job this year of making decisions quicker. In other words, he saw nothing was open out in the flat. The receiver was covered. He saw a lane. And get up field as fast as you can because you want to make some positive yardage. First down is going to be a key for Oregon today. If they're stuck with second down and 12, second and 15 all afternoon, they're in big, big trouble. It's got to be impressed with Danny O'Neill, though, the way he can run. He is an excellent athlete. Reminds me of Miller a little bit. Third down and eight from the 48-yard line. High snap, far goes after him. Still aboard, fumble. Now they're saying he was down. He was down, but again, Fontaine and DeMarco Farr so far having a field day. You talk about team speed and how important it is. Usually you talk about Napoleon Kaufman and his four twos. Well, let's talk about the quickness of defensive linemen Jamal Fontaine and DeMarco Farr. You see DeMarco Farr on Mike DeFonso. Looks like DeMarco Farr knows the snap count. A big crowd in that Oregon offensive backfield. Danny O'Neill looking for explanation. Are they saying he was in the grasp, evidently? That forward fumble forward pretty... progress was stopped. Okay. Four night, uh, fourth down. His forward progress may have been stopped. That's because he was spinning backwards. <laughs> I think that was a good call. Thompson's punt. Nice high punt. Vino Bryant calling fair catch at the 21. 4 7 hang time. We don't bring many of those back. Tommy is outstanding. Been around a long time. A senior now out of Lompoc. Been a player of the week has been an outstanding weapon for Rich Brooks. That's a good point. He has been a weapon until this year. Right. He really hasn't been the offensive threat in field goals and in the punting area as he has been. In Tommy's defense, he hasn't had some support on a couple of punt blocks and also he had a, a pulled muscle in his derriere in fall camp and it hindered his development this year. He has suffered a couple of blocks this year too. First and 10 from the 22. Good for a first down. Off to the 34-yard line is Joe Krolik, and he is stopped by Chad Coda. Nice wide receivers have to be brought into the game. You know, they, Joe Krolik has very few catches. Yes. Yeah. Seven catches, and uh, they, they've got to get him established. He's a good receiver. Joe, the senior out of Puyallup. Indeed, he is one of the more outstanding weapons that Jim Lambright can use if they can get him the ball. First and 10 now from the 34 yard line. Two receivers to the left. Kaufman and nothing doing as the left side defensively held in well. You talk about offensive line play though and the push. You say nothing doing, but the offensive line had at least gotten enough push, a four yard gain on first down. Malapai in there on the tackle. Get those big bodies, just get them all moving forward in the same direction. And you hope that that will take its toll later on in the game, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter. Vino Bryan in the backfield now comes out to the slot position with Kaufman in the back. Second down and six. Draw to Kaufman. First down, Washington, as he gets up to the 45 yard line. Sherman and Coda on the tackle. Spread the field, three wide people left, one back left in the backfield. Obviously, the Oregon defense has got to send some bodies out there. You can see 
Just not that many people left inside for Oregon. Once you break that initial wave, you're back to the free safety, Jeff Sherman. Strong safety, Chad Cota, forced to make the tackle. Cota, 15th in the conference in total tackles. Now first and 10 for Washington. Double tight end. Looking for a reverse. Theron Hill, one lead block, can't get it though. Nicely played by Mr. Isaac Walker, the right cornerback. Don, one thing we're seeing in there that uh, we did not realize what happened. They've got P.A. Emerson playing at guard instead of Patrick Kessie. And uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I'm not sure if Patrick has been injured or if they just worked on that all week long and uh, didn't tell us. Didn't tell anybody. Yeah, the tackle normally. Here it is again. Try to take advantage of misdirection, get the defense going one way, get the ball to Theron Hill. If Jim Navelle can get an angle on Walker, yeah, but Walker did a nice job of staying up to where there's no, exactly, no Just angle at all. Stay home. That's all you have to do. That's right. Second and eight. Ouch. Go those ribs as Mr. Malapai makes the tackle. Salila Malapai, the redshirt junior out of Honolulu. Uh, an injury, is that uh, John? You want to pronounce that last name? Tomo Payao. Tomo Payao? Is he injured? Okay. He's had uh, injuries almost every week. Uh, one thing or another, nothing major. But he's hung in there gamely. Malapai, not the biggest guy in the world in stature, but very, very quick off the ball. It's tough for a center to block him one-on-one -on -one because he can squeeze into that gap so quick. And that's what you want your nose guard to do is take up two blockers, that guard in the center if you can. Well, they list him at 5'11". That means he's probably 5'9 and a half or 5'10". <laughs> he's got a real long haircut. Yeah. And 265, which means he's about six feet wide, too, so he can plug those holes real well. Tough to get leverage on those guys. Mm -hmm. So Tomo Payao was indeed taken taken to the sideline. 535 remaining here in the first quarter. Third down and 10 for the Huskies. Fewer to throw all the way. Goes to Krolik. And they're saying it is complete, but it's short of the first to the Oregon 49-yard line. Try to catch a team on the quick hitter. Azure on the stop. Ball not thrown far enough for a first down, but you're hoping that the receiver has enough of a seam just to pick up first down yardage. Not that time. I think Damon feels comfortable with the three-step drop. He can, he can get rid of the ball. Uh, he can unload it and uh, avoid some contact. Well, from a play-calling standpoint, too, they probably want him to avoid contact, so they're going to try to put him in those situations. Punt again low. And a roll right. Go! Oh! Brown, check that. It is Brown with a different number. That's why we are flinching, but he does have control. It'll be Oregon ball. We'll be right back. There's your time remaining. No score here in the first quarter. First and 10 despite the, uh, the uh, fumble by Brown earlier. Here's Sean Burwell, who brings it up close to the 20-yard line. He's brought down by Lewis Jones. Well, Oregon has lived and died with the pass this year, but on their running plays today, they've all been somewhat successful. They've been able to get three, four, five yards, and if they can do that on first down and make it second and five, second and six, they get a much better chance. Burwell leads Oregon in rushing this year, 300 net yards. He's not having a banner year, but he was bothered by an ankle injury, missed a couple of games, and so he's just now rounding into shape a little bit. Second down and four, got what Oregon needed. Almost six, bad snap, O'Neal fighting for his life now. Down he goes as Devers finds him, Demetrius, in his first start as a Husky. A little unusual to run the shotgun on second and five from your own 20. Oregon has worked on the shotgun the last two weeks, but you can see Danny O'Neal had no chance there. That play was busted on the snap. Well, the other thing, they ran a draw on first down, and that's the one thing they have to do, draw or screen, is uh, front four because uh, the, uh, it looks like there's a little mismatch in there with DeMarco Farr, maybe Jamal Fontaine, and, and, and that draw would help slow down the rush, but if you go to a shotgun and can't get the ball to your quarterback, you don't have much of a chance. <laughs> Run it for your life. No matter where you are. Yeah. <laughs> Third sack for Devers this year. Third down and 11 after being second and four. Pressure again, cross the middle. Incomplete. Incomplete. As they went to Ricketts. And Josh Moore out there defending. And the Huskies hold. It's going to be one of those games. Feels like about a 17 to 10 kind of contest here in the first quarter. Well, the Husky defense has a lot of respect for that offense. And, uh, and they should. And they feel good about the way they've played so far. Now here comes the scary moment for Oregon, the punting. 
Washington <laughs> traditionally has blocked punts, returned punts. You know, with all the emphasis this week, I'm sure Oregon put on protecting Thompson, that might set up a return because you don't have the tendency to get downfield as fast. If he can get it up there 4 7 though, he'll be okay. He did last time. Bean O'Brien back waiting. One more touchdown on a punt return, and he sets a Pac-10 record. Not on this one. Nice high punt. He's going to go for it. Trying to find the seam, trying to find the fence, and it isn't there. Michael Allison, the guy that snaps on the punts, down there. They had a great position. And what was the hang time? Four, three, four. Yeah, well, there you go. And that makes it all happen. And then you have a negative return. So Bino going the wrong way in his quest to catch Oregon's Terry Obi yeah. for the all-time uh, Pac-10 record for return yardage. Akaika Malloy needs to hit his man a little bit upfield to uh, give uh, Bino a little bit more comfort zone back there. 3.06 left in the first quarter. First and 10 on the 37 yard line. A wide receiver to each side. Laying it off. Ooh. Hoffman. A couple of blocks. That pass just way too high and too much of a lob. Ball in the air a little bit too long. Damon's yeah. got a tendency to do that. You know, he, you know, he did it in the Cal game, had it intercepted. He, he's, got to, he's got to get it there firmly. And another injury. Malapai, the nose tackle, who was involved in the hit. And if on it, it looks like, well, maybe we won't speculate, the knee there, the left knee. He's also missed all of last year with an elbow injury. He had surgery on the elbow. He was hurt on the third play of the game last year against his home state team, Hawaii, mm. and virtually missed all of last year. And they're not... They're not real deep in that defensive line. Vanderson with a bad shoulder, Williams a bad ankle. They've missed time, and now see if we can see what happened to Tomo Piao. Ow! His own man. Yeah. His own man got him. Kind of whiplashed him. Yeah. Uh, Rich has done a good job of recruiting in Hawaii. A lot of uh, players. Here. Well, you know, everybody in his staff wants to go over there and recruit. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> well, Jim Lambright had the area for me, and now I hear that Jim's going to keep Hawaii as a recruiting area. Yeah. Well, you've already got three condos over there. You know, you need to use them. <laughs> I hope we don't see a pattern developing so far, though. All the players that have been hurt so far, Pat Casey and uh, John Tomapeau, who, who is back. Malapai, the three Hawaiians, starting to rain. There is a trend, isn't it? Starting to rain. They're out of there. Steve Horton, the offensive line coach for Washington, as Malapai has helped off the field. Well, they'll bring in number 91. You see him there right there. Bryant Jackson, a redshirt freshman from Anaheim, will play some nose. You think this man is rather stocky and wide, Mr. Malapai? Jackson's listed at 6'1", 280. Brooks, Brooks bringing in the big people in the nose area. They'll bring in an extra defensive end in this case to move uh, Bandison more to the inside. So DJ Cabrera, where's he from? Hawaii. We're coming in defensive left end, and uh, so they'll have basically three down linemen again, but a little different look. Second down in nine with two receivers on the left side. Hill to the far left. Bottom of your screen outside beyond Krolik. Still wanting to throw across the middle. Scott Krolik, interception. Pass was well short as Oregon will have it at the 44-yard line. And once again, Alex Molden involved. He has played well here in the first quarter as Krolik makes the tackle. Krolik had about five steps on him, however. I think Damon felt the pressure. He could almost see it coming in from his right side. And, uh, and knowing that that rib is exposed, he just didn't plan and throw. When well, they come with an all-out blitz, you see the two inside backers, Rockwell and Massey. And also they come from the corner with Eugene Jackson. And as you mentioned, I think he felt the heat. And Molden with the pick, and he's had a great career, and he's only a sophomore. Eight-yard return by Molden. First and ten on the 43. What a battle. No score, but a lot of going on, wearing out the carpet in the middle of the field. Oregon 43-yard line. No flag on the movement. Burwell up the midfield and gets into Husky territory to the 48-yard line. DeMarco Farr that time lined up over right guard Mike DeFonso, slants down inside. Burwell goes through the gap left open. Linebacker scraped, I believe, a little bit wide here. You can see uh, Steve Springs said, oh, he, he dodged the block inside, which uh, you, you've got to you got to hit it up, face it up, and, uh, and work around the outside. Lamar Lyons on the tackle along with Hillary Butler. Second down and one. Burwell, as we said, in the top ten of rushers in the conference. 
There's the pitch. Burwell's got a good block by Willie Tate. Well into Husky territory down to the 36 yard line where Lamar Lyons makes the tackle. I think that was a check at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Washington was uh, overplayed to Oregon's right side. Looked like they might be coming on a blitz. And he checked to the option, kind of like we talked about Damon Muir going with that option. Oh, it's a great call. I'll tell you, you get it a second and uh, third and short. You fake the fullback, and it was a good fake. You know, linebackers had to go in honor of the fake. And now you're 101 in the secondary. Great, great call there by the Devils. Oregon number one in total offense in the Pac 10. You're seeing. The Pac 10's most honorary and effective offense. First and 10 on the 37 of Washington. Burwell again breaks the tackle nicely on Justin Thomas and gets down to the 32 yard line, where Richie Chambers, the other new starter, makes the play after a four yard game. Well, if he came into this game and said Oregon would have success running the football, they would be ecstatic against one of the best defenses in the country against the rush and going against what Oregon has used all year long and Burwell averaging five yards a pop. Uh, that's just the gravy for Oregon right now. He's Good plan seven. too. They, they double team the marker. They're not going to single block him on a running game. He's number seven in the conference in rushing now. Second down and six. See, they trap, you know, let him upfield. They're trapping, drawing. You know, they're, they're doing a good job on DeMarco. They've got a game plan for him. Justin Thomas, number five, a sophomore out of Ferris High School in Spokane. Somebody you like, I know, Don, as far as his potential. Yeah, he's a lot like uh, Steve Hoffman. He's uh, tall, slender, and uh, it's a shame that Steve is injured and out for the season, but they're a lot like that. You know, each day they stay in the program and get stronger, the better they'll be. They're, they're fine athletes. Third down and five. Big play for the Ducks here. Pressure, they lay it off in time. Great catch by Burwell. Has the first down and much, much more as he is at the 19 yard line of Washington. What a job by O'Neill to get it away. Maybe he didn't even see the rush coming on. Well, he did it with a quick count, too, before the Washington Huskies were set. And you can see what Burwell does for you. He's been running the ball. He has great, great soft hands here. And he got a tremendous lead block by number 33, Malapai. I don't know if we'll see it at the end. Right there on the Reeser to kick him out. And David Kilpatrick. Patrick's in a flat, and David had to turn that thing back in to his teammates, and uh, but he let it get outside. And the first quarter has come to an end as Sean Burwell and the Ducks are threatening. Oregon with 67 total yards to Washington's 54 here in the first 15 minutes. Engineering a pretty fair offensive drive that started fairly deep in Husky territory. An Oregon, an Oregon team that has started very well in games this year outscored their opponents 68 to 7 in the first quarter. The Huskies have to feel good. They're at least hanging with Oregon given the way things have gone earlier. <laughs> Somebody using that tobacco again, that chewing stuff, staying in the carpet or what? I wonder if maybe that was blood. It could have been. Yeah. Could very I don't well know what been. else they would try to clean up during the game. Here you see the rushing so far. Very, very close passing yardage and total with the turnovers. Two interceptions for O'Neill, one, as you see, and then the First to ten on the 19 yard line for the Oregon Ducks. Two receivers to the right side. Burwell is the tailback. Here comes the heat going to the corner. Incomplete. Well played. Was that David Kilpatrick? Yes, yes indeed yeah. it was. They, against they had him. Great recovery by David. They had him beat, and uh, uh, that looked like that was going to be six. That's a, the, the famed corner out from the twin set. Inside receiver goes out, and it's a tough one to cover. It's a tough ball to throw with the wind blowing like it is as well. You can see this ball is in the air a long time. Going forward, going backward, you get down field level in this stadium, and the ball is going to swirl. The wind is going to swirl the ball. Kilpatrick, great comeback. Second and 10, Burwell cuts inside the 15 yard line. Host of Huskies in there on the hit. Reggie Reeser, the initial hit. I'll tell you, Mecklemore would have come back for that ball a little more. He might have had six. That's twice that he's had an opportunity to come back and make the catch and was una unable to make it. He's made some spectacular catches this year. The one against e uh, USC was just. Unbelievable, and he has that kind of ability. But again, he is, here's a guy that hasn't played much. He's getting game experience now. There's McLemore, third down and four from the 13-yard line. Got to get into the nine for a first and goal situation. O'Neill 
across the middle has Tate has the first down first and goal at the five. He is brought down by Lamar Lyons. Yeah, we haven't heard from Willie Tate until now. Well, you needed to have a big play on a third down. That's a good point. And the thing about Willie Tate is not only does he have nice size, but he also has speed to get downfield. They've used him on some deep routes this year. This one just a little delay. Wait till everybody clears out and then come underneath. Yeah, that's tough on man-to-man -to -man coverage. They, they can rub you off, and, uh, and, and you don't even try to pick them illegally. It's just the uh, uh, defenders get lost in there. Hey, he had an 87-yard touchdown pass against Illinois back there, and most of it was running. Took him about 20 seconds to go that <laughs> distance, but he made it. Hey, Watson, he had the angle on everybody in one good block, but he made it. First and goal from the five. Power formation by the Ducks. They give it to the fullback, Malapai, and not much there at all for Hulo Malapai, the freshman out of Honolulu, who's really in there for Juan Shedrick, the injured fullback, right, Todd? And I thought this game, as Dwayne Jones will now come in as an extra fullback, I thought this would be the game that Oregon has played this year without Shedrick, where he would be most needed. Because with Washington's aggressive defense, the fullback really needs to come out and pick up that defensive end or a, or a blitzing linebacker. Malachi has done a nice job so far. Looking at Jim Lambright, that's the first time these teams have been shut out in their first quarter. Neither team scoring. Second and goal from the four for O'Neill. Burwell jammed up again. Lewis Jones, Lamar Lyon, David Kilpatrick, Hillary Butler, and Richie Chambers on the bottom of the pile. Oregon has only five rushing touchdowns this year. Only Stanford has less rushing touchdowns. We'll run it inside there, just too many bodies. Great job by Lyons, Kilpatrick uh, stuffing it up. Yeah, Chambers got upfield, and that helped. And Lamar Lyons was coming off the corner. Uh, and, and chalk one up on a call made by the Huskies. Chambers, the junior out of Lake Stevens. Old Viking. Third down and five. Third and goal from the five. All the receivers on the right side coming back. Looks across the middle. He was out of bounds had he caught it anyway. Mecklemore, the intended receiver. Well, the Huskies fake blitz and fell off into a seven-man zone. They call it cover seven. And uh, and Danny just couldn't find anybody open. A lot of purple back there, wasn't there? And no the pressure, though. He had a lot of time. You got to give credit to those Husky defensive backs and linebackers for not letting anybody get open because if he was open, O'Neill would have found him because he still had no pressure. The receivers could have run a second, third, fourth route. Tommy Thompson will attempt the field goal. He is 8 of 11 this year, his longest 39. So this is a chip shot being 22 yards. Just inside the hash mark. And it is good from 22 for Tommy Thompson. So the Oregon Ducks are on the board first as the senior out of Lompoc hits his ninth field goal of the year. This one from 22. Off. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you notice he does he does wear a sock and shoe to punt. Mm -hmm. This is a man you've got a lot of respect for, Don Rich Brooks. Yeah, he's got a tough job now. He's uh, athletic director and head coach, and the only one in, a, in Division One A doing that right now. The drive itself, a good one, 53 yards, eating up five, almost five and a half minutes, and Thompson with a 22-yard field goal. We talk about a ball control drive to go 53 yards in 12 plays. You're only averaging four and a half yards a play. Well, you're also keeping the ball away from Washington's offense, too, and you're giving your defense, which has been on the field a lot the last couple of weeks, a little breather. So, I mean, that's the ideal scoring situation for Oregon, although they would have liked to have had the seven points. It's amazing, guys. Looking at the flags on the west side of the stadium, they're going just about just about every direction, from south to towards the west. And the uh, United States flag, old glory on the east side, now is starting to blow, but a moment ago it was hanging straight down. No wind at all. Kaufman trying to go right up the belly up to the 32-yard line. A return of 31 yards as he pats on Mr. Thompson's head and moves on. Former high school teammates, Napoleon Kaufman and Tommy Thompson, a great kick in the air, a long time, deep in the corner, but the Huskies block it very well. Napoleon Kaufman just finds the scene, breaks the tackle, almost gets a chance to practice those old high school butt drills with former teammate Tommy Thompson. Nino Filio, one of the first to get to him, number 12. Huskies may have gotten away with a uh, block in the back. 
Oregon coaching staff rather well, they saw it. Uh, <laughs> well, they saw it. in their protestations. First and ten. Vino now at the tailback goes in motion. Jones back there. Flag goes down. Guess why? That's an excellent use of the cadence and uh, by young quarterback Damon Heward and I guess we shouldn't call him young anymore. He's, uh, he's played all season but uh, you know that's what you like first and five. Rich Rule one of the guys in there early. Rich Brooks. 17th year. Kind of like you, Don, in the fact that he really gives a lot of responsibility to his assistants, right? Oh, yeah. I, uh, Rich is uh, a hands on guy, though. I think he, he stays uh, very close to the offense and defense, and, uh, and especially the kicking game. Manage those middle managers. First and five, as Don pointed out a moment ago, on the 37 yard line. Play action. Rolling it out. Conwell has the first down to the 49 yard line. And again, it was molded on the play. Well, Heward gets up a little slow. He took a hit from Ernest Jones, and, you know, even on the, the waggle play here, you're trying to get him away from pressure, and then Jones was there. You want, if you're Washington fans, you don't want Heward to get hit at all on that play. They call that uh, boot naked sometimes. <laughs> I don't think Damon wants to see too many of those today. Ernie Conwell, the only four catches coming in, but averaging almost 28 yards per. Don't go often, but when he does, he goes all the way. Bino, and he's going to be brought down real early by number 48, Rich Rule. Beautiful job of getting into the backfield. That's a gaps play, uh, backside guard and tackle. You can see uh, Peterson and Pearson pulling, but uh, a linebacker got up inside. So back it up to second down and 14. Not a good way to get much done on first down with Rich Rule getting in there if you're a Husky fan. Seems like all season long the timing on those type of plays has been off for Washington. The running back slightly ahead of the running backs. Screen plays, plays like that. Things just not timed up right. Well, you've got to get a, a tight end or someone down in that linebacker. I see Pat Kessie is back in now. Two tight ends again. They'll go to the short side. Sore ribs and all, short of the first down, and brought Damon down by Hewitt. Sherman is Damon Hewitt. Well, again, that's the checkoff there. That's uh, that's not called up above, but that's uh, you know he, you've got a bad play called. You go to your left, you check off to the right. There's not as many people over there. Uh, really well blocked, and again the, the Ducks are going to cover the tailback on this play and make Damon run. That is exactly what they want to do. They're going to let Hewitt carry the ball and hopefully get a, a, a good look on him. They're not going to let Kaufman get that pitch. That's exactly what you said, Don, going in, was if, if he does run or go with the option, it'll be a checkoff. Third down and four. Frolic in motion. Oh, yeah. Got to get it on him. There's a penalty. Uh, well, that goes on. down back by the quarterback. Once again, though, the play is there. And throw not there. Joe Frolic opens for first down yard as Damon has been short-arming everything, kind of afraid to expose himself. Holding penalty on Washington makes the incompletion move. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, I'm sure the Ducks will turn this down. I want to give that offense another another third down chance. Indeed, so, fourth down for Jim Lambright's Washington offense. And John Wardell's going to have to punt into the win this time, depending on the very moment when he punts. Well, John needs to kick a little better. He hit two the first quarter, uh, very, very average hang time and distance. And uh, John can help his football team with a, a good corner kick here. He's at six inside the 11 yard line this year. Had another one against UCLA last week. Had a chance to do it again as Brown is back to receive. Oregon's only got 10 men on the field, and that's running one in late. That's what in injuries right will do that to you. Yeah. Not this time. Leif Johnson giving chase, number 34, but couldn't pick it up in time. Let's take a timeout. 9.44 remaining here, second quarter. And he may not even have made it back to the line of scrimmage as Hillary Butler was in there. No gain on the play. Marco far upfield again, and uh, and then that's you know that's the philosophy of the Husky defense is just attack. You know when the ball is snapped, you get upfield. And it's it's no more hit and read and react. It's uh, it's react on the run upfield. And if you're an offensive lineman, there's no way you can practice that during the week because no. if you've got people that are that quick on your scout team, you be got playing. a pretty good team. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you go best against the best in the in the season. Mm -hmm. Loss of one, second down and eleven. 
Cooper Butler is way out to the right side. Quick dive. Malapai gets the first down up to the 33 34 yard line. Yeah, and the thing that's that exactly that. what Danny O'Neill did as he looked where Hillary Butler was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Run up inside. It's a play that uh, Ricky Whittle ran against yeah, Washington yeah. last year for about 40 yards, and then he ended up fumbling. That was a big play in that game, but the theory is, is if they've got seven or eight guys at the line of scrimmage and you get past that initial wave, there's nobody uh, there to touch it. And a quick hitter is kind of the best way to get there, too. Malapai averaging only a yard and a half per carry coming into this one. First and ten now from the 34-yard line. Wanting to go deep. McLemore complete to the Husky 35 yard line. Josh Moore there defending. Well, Josh made a very poor read. He thought he saw a post. It was post corner, and he jumped on the post, and uh, he just got left uh, alone out there. Perfect throw by Danny O'Neill as well. Sees the opening, throw the ball to the boundary. McLemore makes a nice adjustment to the ball and the win this time. Josh Moore unable to make up that ground. 31-yard play on the connection from O'Neill to this man, McLemore, the sophomore out of Huntington Beach, California. First and 10 from the 35, eight and a half minutes to go, second quarter. Kaboom, Whittle, hit by Lewis Jones, but still bounces off to pick up pretty good yardage to the 31-yard line where Devers and Jones finally planning. Well, Ricky Whittle is Oregon's hardest running and maybe most difficult running back to tackle. He has a low center of gravity, has good speed, isn't the shifty guy that Sean Burwell is, but he'll run north and south. And if you don't get a solid lick on him, he'll break an arm tackle. You see, uh, Heath Howington is uh, off the field now. That Could that affect the uh, impact of snap here uh, from a different center? McCurran has been playing center. Howington was at guard, although Howington was scheduled to play some center today. Second down and seven after the carry by Whittle. Straight play of that play action across the middle. He intended for Deadweiler. Same pass play that we saw a year ago against Washington and the same result. Deadweiler was open over the middle and O'Neill a little bit overthrown. Getting back to Howington, uh, coach. Uh, two years ago up here, Keith Howington had a rather rude introduction to college football as a redshirt freshman. He had to go nose to nose with Steve Entman. He even made Sports Illustrated, if I remember correctly. That maybe is a catchable ball by Deadwater there. And what a way to have to spend an afternoon. Oh, he spent about five afternoons. Well, think of the uh, backup center for the uh, Washington State Cougars going against Rob Waldrop today, Arizona. Steve <laughs> Wolf down with injuries, maybe for his career at Washington State. They're down in seven. Willie Tate in the slot to the left side, receivers to both sides. Here comes the pressure, and complete. McLemore, Reggie Reeser defending, and he's got the first down. Oregon has an offense this year that you can't just key on one guy and figure to stop them. They have three outstanding wideouts, Burwell, and a tight end. And so now you have in that passing game to defend four or five players instead of trying to double cover a couple. And you see Kristen McLemore, obviously today, for some reason, he's the go-to guy. Well, they're playing a little more zone now. The Huskies uh, have gotten away from the blitz. They've gotten burned a few times. And uh, are they uh, again, Danny did a great job against the zone. First and ten, two receivers to the right, Deadweiler to the left, or short side, flag down on the pitch to Whittle. Nice block, nice job of jamming it by Lewis Jones as he is eventually brought down by Butler. Whittle, by the way, one fumble, but he didn't lose it. That's not bad for a running back of his, uh, well, he's carried only 30 times coming into the game, but it's still not too bad. In fact, he didn't fumble that as a running back. He fumbled uh -huh. it as a kickoff man last week uh -huh. against ASU on the first uh, kickoff of the second half. That was a great way to start the second half, wasn't oh, it? Uh, yeah. It was that deja vu all over again. <laughs> Offsides on Lambright's Huskies. We're a little sensitive about fumbles here after the UCLA game in the first quarter last week. <laughs> well, both of these teams have been victimized in, in their losses with turnovers. Washington, obviously, the last two weeks with 12 turnovers. Oregon turned the ball over six out of its last seven possessions against Southern California. And they were in a position to win that football game, 14-13 at the half. you got to hold on to the ball. And today we've had turnovers already. 12 in the last two games, as you pointed out, on Washington. First and five from the 17. Going for the corner. Reggie Reeser's got a pick. 
And he'll sit down. Thank you very much, Danny O'Neill. Uh, Danny probably should not have thrown that one, even though he had a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, miscommunications on the route uh, with the receiver and the quarterback. Uh, again, a big turnover for the Husky defense. The Husky offense has got to get on track and do something. Maybe he was trying to throw it away. I'm not sure. I think maybe he was just trying to get it out of the end zone. Boy. But he's gone to McLemore. On first and five, you would figure, well, let's be a little conservative. But Oregon's play calling this year has been very aggressive no matter what the situation. They're telling the other defenses, hey, we're going to throw deep on you no matter where we are. Here, it backfires. Reggie's second interception this year. That is the third pick on O'Neill today. First and ten from the 20 yard line. Three turnovers now on Oregon. Hewitt still in the quarterback. Ben O'Brien slides out to the left side, trying to get around the corner. And close to a first down gain of about seven yards, where finally Coda forces him OB. Nice improvisation by Mr. Bryant, along with Isaac Walker, by the way, defensively. Yeah, one of the real disappointing things of this offense is that there's a play that is absolutely stopped at the point of attack. I mean, there's nothing there. And, and you know, running backs should be able to break more, you know, off of a block at the point of attack. And uh, there it was smothered by the, by the Oregon defense. Good situation for the dogs. Second down and two from the 28. P.A. Emerson moving early. So now it's not second and two down. Second and back it up. <laughs> As you said, playing at right guard today for some time. P.A. Emerson Oop. number 79. Anxious. Prince Arthur. The kickoff return specialist with four this year. He's even got an average 12 yards per carry. Is he nationally ranked? <laughs> yeah, I looked in the Pac-10 standings just to make sure that he wasn't there. Yards per pound? <laughs> so as Don pointed out, it is now second and seven. Vino has the first. Up to the 45 and out of bounds. First down, Washington. That was vintage. Vino Bryant. Tackle by Jeff Sherman at the safety. A run of 22 yards for Bino. Just I'm, like Oregon, you break that initial wave when you're sending people and in man-to-man -man defense and there's nobody left. Dave Janoski and DJ McCarthy, wide receivers, both split right. All they do to block their man is run downfield because the defenders are in man-to-man. -man. They're coached to run with them. By the time they recognize that it's a running play behind them, Bino downfield. That is not Bino's longest of the year. He had a 34-yard touchdown against San Jose State. He'll get another shot at it. First down. Ooh, he started to get into the groove, didn't he? After a five-yard gain on first down, he is stopped by Sherman. Well, again, it's too tight end. Let's go after him. Let's see if we can block somebody, run our, run our running plays. If you can't get your running game established, uh, you're not going to beat good defensive teams. There's some fire. Do you see that? See Richard Thomas in there at fullback. Good kick out block. Good block on it. Yeah. it. And Bruner did a good job on Ernest Jones, the outside linebacker, forced him inside. They give him six. So it's second and four with McCarthy wide to the right side, the only wide receiver. And again, double tight end. Bino, third straight time. Trying to get the first. And I don't believe he made it. Host of ducks in the middle there. He, including Byron Rockwell, one of the inside linebackers. So it'll be third down and two from about the 47, almost a long single yard. Big downs for both offense and defensive teams. Uh, you, know, you want to play good, successful football. Uh, offensively, you have to make it. Defensively, you have to stop it. On third and two. First down, Washington. So the Huskies are coming up with their best drive so far today. And that was not a checkoff. That was a that was called from the press box. And again, as, as Oregon ran that play a little while ago, it's a, it, defensive coordinators don't want to see an option on third and short. You have to respect the fullback. You see the fake that Richard Tra Thomas draws a couple of people. Ooh. David knows he doesn't have to gain eight or ten yards. Just turn it up inside and get enough to let your offense snap it again. Give yeah. Gallagher credit there. Yes. First and ten. Richard Thomas starting to show some of that muscle as he is short of the first but gets inside the 45 stopped by Romeo Banderson and Jeff Sherman. 
Well, Richard's a power runner, 5'9", 217, and uh, had a good game last year against the Ducks. Came in late in the game and uh, had some good runs. So here's where Oregon Bandison forgot to make the tackle and tried to create the turnover. He got a hold of the ball carrier, and then it's the second guy's responsibility to come in and strip the ball, but Bandison, in trying to strip the ball, Get him gave stopped. up another four or five yards. Richard with only 10 carries coming into this game. It's nice to see him get busy in there. Yeah, he had a 20 some yarder against the Ducks last year. Second and two, Bino. To Peterson. It is indeed. Cuts back. He can have six. There he goes. Touchdown, Washington. I Bino heard a whistle. Oh, no, no whistle. I thought I heard one, but the official referee single touchdown. Now watch. Let's wait. The flag back on the line of scrimmage. Let's find out what it's all about. I thought I heard a whistle as well, and then it looked like some of the Oregon players stopped. Yeah. Now you don't. You don't stop the play on defense with no. people off field, off, offside. It is indeed a touchdown, and Vino Bryant is feeling the days of old right now. Well, yeah. uh, his second touchdown of the year, both long plays, 34 on the last one, 35 on this one. Richard Thomas, a great cutout block. Andy Peterson downfield, and then Vino just sees nobody back in the middle and makes a vintage cut. Jeff Sherman, number 32, pl playing with a broken hand, was unable to wrap him up. First time we've seen this young man, Travis Hansen, on the field, who will go for the extra point. Travis, 16 of 17 this year. Eric Bjornsson holds. And the Huskies are on the board with seven points and the lead at 7 to 3. 342 remaining here in the first half. Not a lot of points, but plenty of hitting and a typical duck dog game. I think maybe they heard a whistle that we heard up here, but uh, an excellent block uh, play and an excellent cut by Bean O'Brien. Get him in the outfield out uh, in the open. He can run, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, it's nice to see him striding out, too. He's not protecting that hamstring that hurt him so bad most of last year. A nice 80 yard drive. So again, two tight ends just come out and say, hey, our upfront guys are bigger and better than your upfront guys. We're going to make you stop us before we try to get fancy with anything else. Now the play action will start to work. Mm -hmm. Right. And set up. What a big turnaround in just a few plays. Oregon knocking on the goal line. Interception in the end zone. Huskies get the ball at the 20 and right through the defense for the score. Huskies breaking out the parkas for the first time this year. As they lead 7 to 3, 342 remaining here in the second quarter. And again, Lawyer Malloy will have to come out and hold the ball for Jason Crabb. Little gusty down there on the carpet. That's the longest Husky run, by the way, of the season. As you see Sean Burwell waiting, he is one of the leaders in kickoff return. Number two in the Pac-10, and he won't get a chance. If you're going to hit one that low, you better make sure nobody <laughs> gets his hit. 3-1-3 three, three on the end time. PA would have had it. He's 6'6". Six, six. He could have caught it on the way by. He could have stopped it. <laughs> you talk about it being the longest run for the Huskies. That's also been Oregon's bugaboo this year is they played pretty good defense, maybe 60, 65 plays in a game, and then they have seven atrocious plays. That one there, you give up, you know, not a cheap touchdown because that was well blocked, but you give up a long touchdown, and that's right. been Oregon's nemesis. There were not a lot of guys around the ball. No. First and ten for the Ducks now as they trail for the first time. Seven to three. Flags on the line. Movement again. Is it Mr. Stark? There have been a lot of antsy offensive linemen this year in the Pac-10. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but every game, it seems, so our crack staff did a little researching, and last year, 1992, there were five teams in the league that averaged less than 60 yards in penalties per game. This year, there's nobody under 60 yards penalty, so everybody is worse in that category. Yeah, but you know what? Those are those are all those celebration penalties. Well, some of that too, but a lot of illegal procedure penalties this year. You must have watched the Washington Cowboys. <laughs> Cal must, Cal must have moved ten times. Vasco lead to Deadweiler, the 20, who gets him back to at least 10 yards to make the first down. And Russell Harrison there defensively. The other thing is we mentioned that a lot of defenses in our league are have 11 men up, pressuring, they're shifting, and then the defense has to call signals too. So the offensive guys pick up those sounds. And if you say, okay, we're going to get the first down, the defensive guy yells, move. You know, your offensive guys are going to jump. Ned Weiler, number four, and receiving in the Pac-10, playing with a bad wheel, sore ankle. It is second to ten after his last reception. 
Tate and Mecklemore to the right side. Weiler to the left. They stay inside. Malapai and so does Richie Chambers and a couple of other Huskies. Trevor Highfield and Steve Springstead along with Justin Thomas. The other thing, Don, that late shift that we just saw created a total new blocking scheme for the Oregon offense. And, and it's really tough, you know. And then now the offensive linemen for Oregon, they don't know if, if O'Neill's going to even check off. So you got the snap count to worry about, the shift, the play, and it's, I tell you, it's the hardest place to play in the offensive line in college football. And that's why a lot of us didn't play it. <laughs> Fortunately, I wasn't that's, big enough. That's not why I didn't play it. <laughs> ah, golden foot down there. Third down and nine. O'Neill. Across the middle. Nice catch by Detweiler. Looks like he's got the first. Needed to get across the 30. As Reggie Reeser was defending him. Nice gutsy play by Deadweiler, the senior out of San Diego. Does does two things. One, it keeps the drive alive, and it also keeps the ball away from Washington again. They would have had about three minutes on offense, maybe to get another score. And remember last year, a big block punt near the end of the first half took all the air out of Oregon's balloon in that position. Right. Deadweiler again with the reception. First down, Burwell. Not much there as DeMarco Farr is one of the first ones there along with Hillary Butler. A couple guys were not blocked. Well, that's it. This was what we didn't see, Don, against UCLA, though, was the domination of Fontaine and Farr on the outside, or at least stirring things up. They really struggled against those tackles at UCLA. Hey, you saw that, uh, that that number of players in the NFL UCLA was leading? Yeah. You know, they get that's pretty right. good talent down there. <laughs> they are. UCLA first in the nation now, I think, or close to it. What are they, 37 players out there now? Three of the top four are Pac-10 teams yeah. in terms of NFL Huskies aren't chopped liver, are they, Charles? Huskies at number four. Second down and 10. Across the middle, get it to the fullback, Malapai, and he is met by Springstead. Short game, only to the 35, well, let's call it the 37-yard line. And now the Huskies want to take a timeout. Their confidence on third down that they can stop Oregon and get the ball back or force them into a punt. Maybe they can block it. Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. Be sure to join host Tom Glasgow along with Dave Crosby, Art Teal, and Steve Rudman as they discuss the latest hot topics circulating around the Northwest sports scene on Sportsbeat. That's Wednesday, 7 o'clock live on Prime Sports Northwest. For the time out of the field, I'm Don Poyer. We've got Todd McKim, the voice of the Oregon Ducks. We got Coach Don James. We've got Chuck Nelson. The harmonics, the Northwest harmonics. Uh, let's see. We, who wants to sing tenor? I can't sing. I make no claims to make you <laughs> making any appearances on stage. A game of this magnitude deserves at least four people in the booth. That's Don't right. Don't you think? Right. Oregon would like to play the last song here in the first half, but a long ways to go in a minute and 43. But they've got an awfully good kicker out there and Mr. Thompson. And a win at their backs on this drive. What's along with Tom, Tommy this year is down. I mean, only 39 yeah, 56 yarder. 56 uh, yarder, ironically, Colorado? against or, uh, Washington last Washington, year. Or last year. Wind That's right. Wind Wind aided. Aided. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember it, Don? Was that before or after the side swipe on your cheek there? I, I read about that this week. But <laughs> <laughs> well, Tommy has great range in practice. Uh, you know, regularly on the Friday afternoon practices, he'll make field goals mm -hmm. from 62 or maybe even 67. Of course, that's with no rush, but still it shows you the leg strength that he has. Lampak, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, though, Oregon 10th in the conference in net punting at 32.8. Third down and five. Going to Burwell, low and away as Richie Chambers came in for the side swipe at the end. Minute 38 remaining. And it'll be time to punt. The Huskies will get the ball back with a minute and a half and or so to go and in the second quarter. And uh, one good drive under their belts. Well, you know, having watched the films of Oregon this year, that uh, Oregon is thinking, protect our punter. And the Husky fans are thinking, let's go Bino. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's hard to do both, protect the punter and have good coverage. Ten people up. Look out! Lamar Lyons.
It's almost with a flag down in the backfield of Oregon. Boy, it's tough catching those footballs in the wind, as Vino can attest. Let's find out what the flag's about. That may be a first down for Oregon. It'll be very close if it's against Washington. It looks like about five yards to go. They might actually have to march it off over by the sticks. Well, they didn't touch the punter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not enough men in the backfield for Oregon. So what do you do if you're watching? Make them punt it again? Or what do you do? You, that, that runs that more was, time off the clock, but it was would, a great punt. No return. I'd be tempted to make them punt it again. I would yeah. Yeah, get better field position. That was a 46-yard punt. Although that wind is blowing pretty good. Uh, that American flag is, is yeah. coming off the lake. Uh, 197, Tommy got that off. Anything under two seconds is, uh, is exceptional, and it's a good thing he did because there was pressure. I was going to say, if you're Washington and decide to come after Thompson now, even if you run into him, you won't give Oregon a first down. If you rough him, you do. Yeah. So there's a little more leeway there for your rush. As Vino awaits, I think Lamar Lyons was that one-tenth of a second away from getting his mitts on the ball. Tommy will try it again. This time he's standing on his own 18. And the ball's on the 32. Returns. returns on it, isn't it? This is not as good a punt. And Vino should be able to return it. Got to get to that fence. Greenlaw gives him a cut black rock. And Coda brings him down at the 38-yard line with the flag down. Uh, when the initial play breaks down and the punt returners start to scramble, the blockers start to scramble as well. And you just start throwing blocks, not knowing where Vino's going to end up. And sometimes you get somebody in the back. Vino's having some fun today, though. Seen a smile on his face, getting involved. I think Scott Greenlaw uh, made a, a block there in the back, and I think uh, Rich saw it and then told the uh, wing <laughs> official, and uh, that flag came out a little bit late. They're making up for the one they missed on the uh, on the kickoff uh, earlier. That oh. flood our referee today. Well, now your philosophy is absolutely switched around. Now it's Washington inside the 20. Now it's Oregon that wants to stop with the field position. So, boy, it's really bizarre how you know, special teams or one play can swing the the coach's decisions one way or another. Damon well, going from the shotgun, too. You forced him to punt for the second time after a 46-yard net mm -hmm. punt, and you ended up behind where you would have been if you had just taken the play and, and uh, the original play. Kaufman and nothing doing as Coda basically mirrored him coming out of the backfield, as a good safety will do if that's his assignment. Napoleon tries to get out of bounds as well as get as much yardage as he can. Picks up four, but the clock continues to run. Just under a minute to go. On second down and six, Kralik wide to the right. Single coverage with Walker on him. At least it looks that way. Dropping way back, though. Hill out of bounds at the 40 and a first down. 41 seconds remaining first half. Oregon knowing Washington has a long way to go. Doesn't want to give up the big play. Playing soft in his own. So Ron Hill does a good job of finding a hole against that sideline. Damon Hewer does a good job of finding Theron Hill. Take what they'll give you. 41 seconds. Huskies need about 30 more yards to get into field goal range. That play was good for 17, so a couple more. You got plenty of time. Plenty of time. They're going to give you that much range. Looks left again. Got to get away from the pressure. Nicole Napoleon gets away from the cornerback. Let's see where they mark it. By golly, he got the first down, and he is into the Oregon part of the field at the 47-yard line. Clock stopped with 34 seconds remaining. Did you see how quick that first step was? <laughs> you run. Damon Hewitt says, I know he's faster than I am. Watch this right there. Jackson. Woo. Well, in poor tackling, because the last thing you want him to do is run outside. You'd like to tackle him outside in. Well, if you're you, Eugene Jackson right here, because uh, you've got help on the inside to get the out-of-bounds, stop the clock to the outside. And you know you've got to break down when you yep. get up to him. Easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> on the 47 of Oregon, first and 10, 34 seconds to work with. Across the middle, Kralik, too far. I think he did that right off the bat. It looked as if he was thinking, yeah, he's covered, I'll just throw deep. But they have to do that with their offense. They have to go deep and throw deep. And I, I'll tell you one thing that we, we've not mentioned on this drive, you have to give Jim Lambert a lot of credit. Most coaches, when you're backed up inside your 20 with a minute to go, would say, let's run it, let's go in the locker room, let's sit on our 7-3, let's not turn the ball over down here, give Oregon a big break. But uh, that shows a little confidence in Damon Hewitt, and I think uh, Damon appreciates that as that offensive team is. Second down and 10, 28 seconds remaining. First half. 
Huskies lead 7 3. Good protection. Jones and Matt has it down to the 44 and out of bounds. Clock stopped with 23 seconds. So they used only five ticks on the play as Eugene Jackson was there defensively. I thought he had Thron Hill on the corner route. Uh, looked like the uh, the cornerback was uh, was off about four or five yards, and that's what they basically need now, Chuck, to get this thing within uh, field goal. Just going to say, how many more yards, Chuck? Get the ball down to the 30-yard line, makes it a 47-yard field goal. So they have about 14 more yards to do that. Into this win, I think 47 is about the max that you're going to see Travis Hansen be able to come up with. He had a 42-yarder last week, his longest of the year. Theron Hill, there it is. Came right back to it. It was open on the play before. Jeff Woodruff saw it, I'm sure, in the press box. Came right back to it. If, if Oregon's going to play that zone, uh, that's that's what they've got to do to get it down into field goal range. Second time they've basically thrown the ball over there. This drive, remember early in the drive, missed one on the last play with not throwing it. That time, okay. Lamont Woods there defending it. 18 seconds remaining. And you're right, from the 31 at 7. Huskies still have two timeouts to go. So they should be able to work a full three plays in before they have to send the field goal team out. They're at 48 yards now. For an attempted field goal. First and 10. Matt Jones. Now they're inside the 30 to the 20, call it the 29 yard line. Rich Rule gets him out of bounds. With those two timeouts, the Huskies are not forced to work the sideline exclusively. Yeah. They see a dump over the middle. Or even a draw. Now Oregon's thinking pass rush, those down linemen. They're thinking get up field, get to that quarterback. Hewitt is now 11 of 15 for 87 yards. A lot of rhythm passing today. The draw is a real tough play to defend right now for uh, the Oregon defense. They're down to one linebacker in the middle. Second down and eight. Looking deeper. Hill this time overthrown and covered by Lamont Woods again. That time DJ was a little bit open in the middle there on a the, on the crossing pattern. Damon getting a little fixated on Theron Hill on that left, <laughs> on that left boundary. Easy yeah. to do, I would imagine. And, and you know, the coaches are telling Damon, you know, you know, we got to protect the football. We've got to come out of this drive with something and. Uh, and, and, and Damon is being very conservative. You talk about quiet the crowd is. If I'm Travis Hansen, though, I'm sitting there thinking mm. I've got to have a 46 yarder into about a 20 mile an hour win. I just soon <laughs> see him do something to get me yeah. help get me to 40. Yards. Watch the watch the flag now right there. It's almost dead right to left for the kicker. Got a hurry. Third and eight. Going for the big play. Oh, almost the takeaway. Well, you got to make those plays if you're a free safety. Jeff Sherman. That's two that he's had right in his midst this year. One against Illinois that would have sealed the victory back there. And then this one here because uh, now you give opportunity to Washington to get uh, three points. Good coverage by Woods. You got the help over the top by Sherman. And again you see that left hand. He's got a broken thumb. It's tough to catch the ball. Woods didn't go for the pump did he Don? No. And he did everything you have to do as a defender. He didn't, no. he didn't bite on anything. He played that too deep perfect. Called a 46 yard attempt left hash mark. Into a win, right to left. Long enough, no good. To the left. And that will end the first half. As he attempted that 46 yard attempt, he has a 22 yarder. Check that. That being, of course, for the Ducks and Mr. Tom. Gave them a first down at that point. But I'm, but I'm sure Washington came into today having watched. Take catch nine balls against no. ASU, and you have a tendency to give a little more well, attention to somebody line, like that. Linebackers know where he is, yeah. but you know the other thing: uh, the, the Huskies have, have passed five times to the wide receivers in one half, and that's helped them a little bit. And they also probably want to get Mark Bruner in the game. Mark tends to be a great second half receiver. <laughs> they go to him in that second half. Boy, California, he really lit it up as they found him quite often in that second half. Washington won the toss at the beginning of the game if you recall they deferred and now they will be receiving here in the second half with the wind to their faces which means they uh, shall have it to their backs in the fourth quarter as best we can tell I don't know flag blowing almost directly from the south Vino from the 13 and he is up to the 35 yard line where they'll start their offense here in the second half. Bino was 70 yards rushing the first half. A good field position for Washington last week. Oregon had a heck of a time on kickoff coverage. They gave, it, gave up over 200 yards in kickoff coverage. See the first half possessions first for Washington, and they get the TD near the end of the half, and then another good drive 
missing the field goal. Oregon, meanwhile, uh, wasn't able to consistently move the ball either. So it's first and ten, and again, it's that double tight end formation. Conwell and Bruner in there. They give to Matt Jones first down. Good first down play of seven yards, six, seven yards, where Rich Rule made the tackle number 48, the linebacker. We'll start off right the bat, right off the bat, Washington offense saying we could do it in the first half. We're going to do it in the second half as well. We can do it whenever we want to. Yeah. Matt Jones, the senior fullback from the state of Oregon. Well, as you and Don have said so many times, that opens up everything when you've got the the running game established as Kaufman is now in the tailback position or the single running back spot. Second down and four after the game by Matt Jones. Hewitt across the middle goes to Ernie Conwell. Oh, intercepted by Oregon. Was it Rich Rule? John Tomo Payao, I okay, believe. Tomo Payao, indeed, the, he was the outside injured, linebacker. He was the injured player that they helped off uh, in the second quarter, and now the deflection, and this has been a day for the defenses. We talk about trying to get the tight end involved early. Ernie Conwell running his route, avoids the official, doesn't look back to the quarterback in time to see the ball hit him right in the middle of the chest. Tomo Payao, the recipient of the lucky bounce you can see the ball well thrown route well run just doesn't get his eyes back to the quarterback in time and that field position that Washington had from the good kickoff return has been given back to Oregon first and ten is Malapai gets down to the 32 short of the first down but there is a flag down back on the line of scrimmage when it comes out that quick by the umpire it's got to be holding and if you're an offensive lineman you just hope that the flag doesn't hit you <laughs> because you get blamed then whether it was whether you, it was or, you not. or not <laughs> I think Rich is saying uh, let's call him on the other side too but Rich has been very Vocal and active today, normally is. Rich will work the officials. Oh, so yeah. I've seen that for <laughs> 16 years. I was going to say, you saw it for 16 yeah. some years. So it'll be back to the Oregon 49 yard line. Rich would rather have them jump offside if they're that anxious to stop those defensive linemen. Go ahead, jump offside. <laughs> it's only five. Well, we started the second half with roll reversals. Oregon turned it over three times with interceptions in the first half. Washington got the penalties. Now it's the other way around. Washington now with two turnovers for the game. One here in the second half. O'Neill, a lot of time to throw and completes it to Mecklemore. And they're up to about 11 yards from the first down. Russell Hairston defending. You see Oregon's possessions in the first half, the two picks, so they dodged a bullet early. One of those interceptions deep in their own territory, the other one at the Husky Five, and a couple of punts. Finally got things on track with the field goal, but another interception in the end zone cost them more points. Tate and Mecklemore to the left side on second and 12. Deflection. Don, it was Jamal Fontaine. One thing that's obvious now, you can see a halftime plan for the Oregon Ducks was to move the pocket, get Danny O'Neill out, uh, keep him away from the hard rush, and uh, he's had one completion. I think he had a receiver open there, but uh, uh, again, uh, you know, you, now you can see Jamal Fontaine can't put a lot of pressure on. He's got to work for leverage and containment, but he did get his hands up and got the ball knocked down. That's a big play. That's Four. your number three tackler in the Pac-10 for losses, too. Amazing. 14 tackles for loss coming into the game. Third down and 12. Far touch him, evidently. <laughs> Barnes is still standing there. He finally comes over to protect his quarterback. Keep an eye, remember, the flag is down right. as Malloy gets the pick, and this is, we assume, wasted energy. Got a free play, not Malloy. Yeah. But you got kind of like to throw it in the area where you had the receiver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there was no Oregon receiver within 10 or 12 yards in that situation. It's Todd, one thing yeah. to throw it deep, but to throw it deep for no reason. That was that spot pass. Was pass flow. On the defense, repeat third down. No one was on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Johnny. That's right. <laughs> I don't have him on my depth chart. As Jim Lamb writes, he went marching home. <laughs> But I'm like you. I don't ever want to see that quarterback uh, throw an interception, and even if he's got a free play, I, I don't see that that ever does us any good. Get it in the neighborhood of a receiver. Well, and you're never sure either. I mean, you're never sure whether the official yeah. saw saw an offensive lineman's mm -hmm. knuckles turn white and draw the guy off or something like that either. You, you never know. A 
again McLemore and Tate to the left on third and six. Better pressure by the Huskies. Tate looking left and not looking right to catch the ball. Was that his first drop of the season? I don't remember him dropping another one, Don. Yeah, that's his first one. And that, that was going to be close to the first down. He was right near the sticks. Reggie Reeser was closing in on him, that's too. That's the other thing. And that ball was not thrown with a lot of velocity. Danny rolling left, throwing across his body. And uh, this one didn't have much mustard on it. Good pressure by Hillary Butler. Yeah. Jamal Fontaine didn't contain Hillary up underneath. And uh, that's one thing that Jamal Fontaine has been very good at today and all year is if you are rolling his way, he keeps contained, he keeps leverage, and lets Hillary Butler stay in the play. Tommy averaged 39 yards a punt in the first half as he stands on his own 50 this time and Beano Bryant on his own 10. On his own 50, that's hard to do. How about on the 50? Going for the right corner. Beautiful job by the Ducks. Do they keep it in? And to rest inside the three yard line. A lot of help for Mr. Thompson that time. Nine guys down there down in that ball. Yeah. Tommy Thompson and one other guy, the only two Oregon guys that aren't involved. You see a great play downfield. Now remember, they can catch the ball if no Husky is trying to. There is not trying to. And Grady O'Connor does a good job of keeping it in play and then everybody else gets involved. And Tomo Pia, number 46, also the last one to slide in there and keep that ball from going in. So he's been a busy man in the last uh, couple of minutes. Good job, Tommy. First and 10. Ball is officially marked on the four yard line. Again, two tight ends. Matt Jones trying to get a little breathing room out beyond the five yard line. Short game. They'll give him two yards. Huskies came into this game in the Pac-10 fourth in rushing, eighth in passing, seventh in total offense, and fourth in scoring offense. They have seven points so far today. Defensively, Oregon came in fifth in the rushing D, eighth in passing D, eighth in total D. Second down and eight. Hoffman against the wall and then sidesteps his way to the 10 yard line. Short gain again. Let's try to get some room for Waddell to pump the ball. Another Oregon player injured on the play as well. That says something for P.A. Emerson. He's the kind of young man that uh, he saw the injury and he, he right away flagged the, uh, the Oregon trainers in. Get in here and help. You've got a guy down and now you like to see that. You hate to see anybody down, but you like to see other players uh, have some, some, some concern about their uh, competitors. That was Gary Williams. And that's the same ankle that he injured last week. And uh, he's a big, strong guy, 6'2", about 278. Very good at the point of attack on the run. Not uh, necessarily a pass rusher, but you lose some beef. You lose a senior that's played for three plus years as well. Right. And now you got to bring in a younger guy that's probably going to give up about 20 pounds. And that'll be DJ Cabrera at 6'4 and 250. And you're right on the button on that one. I also have noticed that we've seen a lot of uh, Byron Rockwell this afternoon at the yes. inside instead of Jeremy Asher. Now I saw Asher on the sideline earlier. Don't know if it's uh, whether or not Jeremy got hurt or they're just trying to move in some new personnel but uh, Rockwell has gone I'd say the last two quarters to Ron Hill the only wide receiver wide to the right side and there is Cabrera out of Honolulu so it's third down and four with Kaufman and Jones in the backfield check that it's Richard Thomas Trying to gain to the first and will not do so. And it'll be time to punt for John Wardell. And if he were to get a good one, it's a good time to do it right now. This series set up by good special teams play by Oregon, an area that has been much maligned this year. The punting team does a good job, and then the defense does a good job. Three consecutive inside running plays for the Husky offense. Doesn't pick up enough yards for the first down. The wind in John Wardell's face. Right now, the flag is almost dead. Hanging straight down as Brown is about to receive. The flags on the goalpost 10 yards behind John Wardell are whipping away. Oh, sideways, from yeah. <laughs> Low and wobbly, very returnable from the Husky 46. Good coverage. A flag goes down. 
But a nice job by Ernie Conwell to make the tackle. That could have been disastrous, that punt as low as it was. Well, it was another 2 8 hang time. And John said uh, in the first half he had two up there, about 2 5 and 2 6. And what their target is is over four seconds. So uh, John's not having a great day. But again, when you try to punt with these swirling winds in this stadium, uh, it's, it's a difficult task. Looks like he's in a real big hurry to get it off. He's catching it and kicking it in a in a big hurry and not not setting it. Remember he was having that kidney problem or they uh, something a couple weeks ago over the last three or four weeks he's had some problems with. Ten yards from the end of the run. First and ten. John Wardell's had some problems with what they think are like kidney infections or something. His, his body would start to ache and his fever would go up to 103 104 and then it would come back a couple of days later. I don't know if he's been suffering from that this week but he was prior prior to the UCLA game last week. See Oregon has been a very very good first half team and uh, obviously not very good in the second half the Huskies have been just the opposite they've been pretty good in the second half two to one margin they're scoring versus the opposition. First and ten from the 48 yard line of Oregon as the Ducks take over They trail seven three Burwell opening on the right side as the first gets down to the 36 yard line of Washington where Lions and Jones knock him out of bounds. I think that's the first time today we've seen that counter tray where they pulled a couple of people normally against Washington. You hate to pull people because of penetration but this time they run it. Well they were in the 4 6 defense and Danny O'Neill saw the perfect place to run it to. He ran it back to the short side into the boundary where the Huskies were a man short. Steve Harden pretty good lick too. the left tackle who pulled with him. That's all game plan there. That's uh, that's an excellent job by the coaching staff and uh, translate that into a good quarterback who can handle it. Uh, it's too tight end offense again that play in this play. Sean out of Canoga Park California it's first and ten from the thirty six yard line trying to do it again. This time Steve Springstead is there waiting for him. Number forty nine he's now the leading tackler on the Husky team after the Bruin game. Now the Huskies balanced up their defense that time and uh, and they were not short on the weak side so they had as much strength into the boundary as they did into the field and you see a good job by Steve Springstead uh, getting out as well as uh, Richard Chambers. Beavers standing up the right tackle as well as Steve now as I said with 45 tackles coming in 20 of those solos after the Bruin game. Second down and nine for Oregon. Looking right, throwing left. Detweiler gets away from Jones. No, trips him up or actually mixes him or causes him to slip. And so it'll be of little or no gain. Well, they're probably a little bit out of field goal range here. The ball marked at the 36. You'd be asking for a long, long field goal at this stage of the game. You probably wouldn't attempt that. So this is twice now to start the third quarter that Oregon has been in Washington territory. Came up short the first time. Third down and ten. Almost batting 500. It is good. Maybe short. Let's wait and see. Mecklemore, the receiver, they give him the forward progress to about the 27. And I think they're going to be about a yard short. I think you're right, and it's a big decision for Rich Brooks, a decision that he's already made. We're going to try for the three. A good protection this time by Oregon as well. Daniel Neal puts the ball in the perfect place, and a good job by McLemore to keep Lamar Lyons on his back and make the catch. You could say a lot of goods about that play. Good yeah. coverage, good throw, good yeah. catch. Just, you know, the, the guys are out there competing hard, and uh, it's another just, a major play. It's another Oregon Washington game, yeah. Timeout is being called by Oregon as Tommy Thompson will think about this one and line it up. We'll be back 851, third quarter. Tying the other <laughs> 44 yard attempt. His longest this year at 39, but you know he is well within his range from 44. Almost straight away. And the wind pretty much behind his back, we think. And it's good. Plenty of leg. Huskies played safe there. They didn't have a rush. I think they were really concerned about a quick play and uh, and basically willing to give them the three pointer if they can make it. And indeed he can. Plenty of leg. Snap comes back well handled. And very seldom will you see that all those linebackers standing on a uh, on a field goal. Thompson's now hit five of his last six. That was his longest of the year. 
And we talked earlier about the fact what a weapon he was for Oregon. Last year, I think three times he was the Pac-10 Special Teams Player of the Week. Yes. It's quite an honor for a kicker to get that many awards. And maybe he's a little more healthy now, and they certainly will need him down the stretch with big games coming up. You know, this is the first of three really important games against very good defenses for Oregon. They Arizona up pretty good. Oh, geez. <laughs> Are they okay this yeah. year? But, I mean, Oregon has racked up some nice offensive numbers so far this year, and I don't want to demean the defenses they play, but they're facing the best three defenses in the Pac-10 statistically this week, next week, and the yeah, week after WSU. with Washington, Washington State, and Arizona. The scoring drive itself, as you see, five plays, 25 yards, and he up just a couple of minutes. As Tommy hits it from 44. Well, again, you can go back to that interception. It gave the, the Ducks good field position. And they couldn't capitalize the first time, but they did the second. 8.46 remaining here in the third quarter. Another good, tight Washington Oregon football game. And you know that if you took the microphones and we just would shut up for a while, you'd hear some of the best popping and hitting that you'd get all year when these two meet. Hoffman from the four. Up to the 20. Squirts in for another five yards to the 25 yard line. Clock too early. They, the guys threw their blocks and it was pretty good hang time on the kick. And uh, the holes flowed up. There was a gigantic uh, hole there at one time. I mean, Thompson's done a good job of hanging the ball up in the air and getting it over in the corner. And Damon Heward once again takes a Husky offense out onto the field. Not that far off of their own goal line. Ball at the 25 yard line. Seeing Steve Morton there. How's Miles Corrigan doing? He was able to come home, I believe, isn't he? Or fly him home? Or? Well, he was due to get come home this weekend. Right. right? Released, released from the hospital on Wednesday. Tight end coach and had heart surgery, of course, down in California. Looking at a reverse. Nope. Kaufman keeps and only gets two yards out of it as it was defended very nicely by Ernest Jones and the rest of the Oregon Ducks. Bjornsson in at flanker. Yeah. When you fake the reverse to Eric Bjornsson, boy, that makes you think about all sorts of things that they could have done. Yeah, play pass defense, oh, number one. Don't worry about the run. That's right. <laughs> That's a play Oregon has run this year. Kristen McLemore has run the reverse from the receiver spot and has thrown the ball, former high school quarterback. He's one of three. Hit a 20-yarder. Second down and eight. Ooh, nice protection from behind. Maybe. Banderson still giving chase. He still gets it. Nice effort by Romeo Banderson. You see Damon landed right on the ball yep. in his right ribs, right in the area that he has the injury. Yeah, he didn't have to do that either. He could have uh, he could have thrown it away. There's a duck down too. Excuse me, Don. I was thinking the same thing. It looks yeah. like he had time to try to find a receiver and made the decision a little bit early. Yeah, there are a lot of crossing patterns with the bootleg, and the, the, he had a couple of options there. I think he was confused. There's a replay. See, it's counter bootleg. See, he rolls out to the right, and he's got time to make now, the decision right there. Dump it to Matt Jones. Matt Jones and I yeah. think what happened is he got the wind knocked out of him. They're spending as much yeah. time lifting on his belt, trying to get some air in there, as they are looking at his rib cage. You can see he doesn't appear to be in a whole lot of pain. He's just trying to get his eyes from water. <laughs> get this boy. That's, that's a scary a, feeling. The whole body back in sync again. <laughs> I, I've had it happen to me too. Oh, it's, you see the injured. That's Mark Sliman, the well. backup defensive end. Looks like he has some kind of an ankle or foot problem there, the right side. See a lot of that nowadays with the artificial surfaces. Uh, Low cuts. Yep. Well, that and the feet. Yeah, that, that's that's true. I just, you but you know, the feet, feet stick a little bit, and you turn an ankle. Yep. Third down and eight yards to go for Washington now after the injuries, and of course Eric Bjornsson comes into the ball game at quarterback with a nine for 25 track record passing so far this year. Third down and eight. The keeper, Eric, fights his way up for the first down. Let's see, where are they going to mark it? I don't know, guys. The left foot is just short of the linesman, or just short of the uh, first down marker. The linesman walked farther towards that first down marker than I thought he was going to, and Jack then he Zubin. 
And yeah. he put the left foot down instead of the right yeah. foot. Yeah. It's like John Madden says, which foot is he using, the left or the right? And I think he used the left this time. Well, and all week long, Oregon has been coached. If they run the option, ignore the quarterback. And the quarterback has been open a couple of times today. Uh, uh, I'd like to see a replay if we could on the spot. I, you know, I know as a coach, uh, sure, that was uh, that would not have been a very good spot unless it was on my side of the field. Take a look. See the Oregon side of the field is where they run this thing, and Eric Bjornsson makes the correct decision. Theron Hill tries to get into him. You can see. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. It's, his feet were way past the the, the marker. It's just whether the ball was. I don't think the official could have seen it. You That's, like this decision, Don? Looks like they're going for it. Well, if you can't make a foot on people, you know, you probably don't deserve to play. And, you, you, you know, you're not going to win big games if you can't make a yard. And, uh, and you've got a quarterback, too, and Eric Bjornsson that is certainly big enough if you want to run a quarterback sneak. Six, five, two and a quarter. Why not run the option again? It's well, been open all day. Yeah, if you want to. Well, behind a 280-pound center, if they've got nobody on the nose, you got to be able to just move forward. No there linebacker up close. Yep, that's what it is. All he's got to do is get just short of the 35-yard line. I think if the line judge doesn't spot that, uh, <laughs> he may get run out of the stadium. Well, the line, but he's got his right foot right on the line this time. It's just a matter of feet. He's they say it's a game ball. of inches, but it's a game of feet. Uh, the, the official's foot. <laughs> Jim Navelle, you did your job, young man, the senior. I could get a first down behind Jim Navelle. He would quit about, looking at about me. That same as Eric Bjornsson, though. <laughs> Real cute, Chuck. Okay. <laughs> First and ten for the Huskies. Right on the 35 yard line. 7.17 to go in here in the third. Looks like the check off. Hoffman. That was sweet. They couldn't stay with the box, though. You know? Yeah. I suppose. I mean, they had him dead to rights in the back, but you're right. Pat Kessie, uh, puller there, trapper. Coda with a tackle for Oregon. 6-1 and 188. The right guard, Pat Kessie, come along the left-hand side. A nice kick-out block. Mac Jones runs right by Rich Rule. Linebackers have heard this play today. They're not, they're not getting an onside lineman down on him. Second down and three after the seven-yard gain. There's Patrick. Kaufman following Peterson. Oh, It'll be his longest play of the year. No flags. Touchdown, Washington. That's Peterson's job to go down there and make sure that he doesn't celebrate. <laughs> One of the uh, Oregon secondary players got confused. Thought, thought the ball was inside, made a bad decision. Lamont Woods, the outside right corner, lost uh, track of where number eight was, and he went inside, and Napoleon went outside, and Napoleon went 57. That's when you start freshman, Richard Freshman. That's what happens. 58-yard run. As now Travis Hansen comes out. And has done his job. And the Huskies move back up to that lead, 14-6. Off the 58-yard run, yes, by far his longest this year. 26 was the longest going into this game. Very similar to the play we just saw right there. You see Matt Jones once again. Andy Peterson pulls outside, and Napoleon gets out in the open field, and you saw the corner flash down inside. Basically, it looked like he was almost running to Matt Jones as opposed to Napoleon Kaufman. Mark Bruner made a great play. Mark really sealed the outside. So the two pullers could, could get outside of Mark, and uh, there were there were not enough people to block. It's like Matt Jones planted somebody too. Napoleon thinks he's in the CIF finals. <laughs> and again, we've talked about this for Oregon that they play pretty good defense for 89, 90 percent of their plays, and they've had two big runs today, two big breakdowns, and they trail by eight points. Two minutes, 23 seconds, 75 yards. It's been a long time, actually, since we've seen Napoleon Orbino bust a big one like that. We've had a couple beauties as Bino has a 35-yard touchdown run, and now Kaufman with a 58-yarder. He's in the crab with a kick, and it's short. 
But effective. And Whittle goes out of bounds. Yes, very effective as they force him out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Jason Crabb is very good at doing that on purpose. They call it a bloop. They, they just work on it. They try to let him uh, get as much hang time as he can. He had that up there four, four, four. Good hang time. Bring it down around the, the two and the zero. And uh, and you've got guys. You know, you got guys can run on any kickoff team can run that far. It looked like Oregon was going to try to run a middle return or return to the other side, and so they were ignoring the outside coverage people on this side. So the Huskies basically just run downfield and knock him out of bounds. For the Oregon Ducks, it's first and ten. They trail 14 to six. Down by eight. O'Neill. More time. Devers gives chase. Here's Willie Tate, the tight end. Takes a couple of Huskies with him up to the 36-yard line and a first down for Oregon. Didn't take long to get uh, Willie Tate in the game, did it? That's exactly right. They need to get him the ball because not only can he catch it, but he can break tackles, too. He's a big, strong guy, and it usually takes three or four to bring him down. Pretty simple-looking play here. That's a play-action pass off the counter play that the Huskies just ran twice in a row. Uh, Patrick on the tackle. The play action inside kept Hillary Butler inside, and he wasn't able to get out in the flat in time to get to Willie Tate. Kilpatrick went for a bit of a ride, too. Willie is strong. First and ten. Deadwater wide to the left side. Up the more to the right. Now they ran a counter. Springstead is able to run him down. That took some athletic ability because he had a long way to go to get to Sean. That's the counter there. They, they ran the counter pass first and came back with the counter. You see the, uh, the left guard, left tackle, number 63, pulling there. And this play is set up pretty well, but the speed inside makes the difference. No if he doesn't make that tackle, that's a 10 or 15 yard I didn't think uh, Steve would get to it. They had, a, they had a, a step on him. But Steve can run. The inside linebackers for the Huskies can run. Well, speed and strength right there. He had the speed to get there and then the strength to haul him down with yeah. one hand from behind. Second down and seven. They only got three yards on the play by Burwell. Same formation with Dittweiler to the left. Here comes the blitz with Malloy. Picked up nicely, and Mecklemore has the first down up to 50, up to the 50. As David Kilpatrick, Josh Moore, and company up there. Weak safety blitz. You saw Lawyer Malloy coming. They, the Ducks did a good job of picking him up. There he is, number nine. Uh, sealed very well. Eric Barnes to be impressed. And Josh Moore was turned around again. Everybody stays in the block on this play. Only the two split people out running routes. Good adjustments by quarterback and receiver. And O'Neill has to do a 360 before he knows if the pass is caught. First and ten. Ball right at midfield. Two receivers to the left. McLemore and Tate. Looking to reverse. It is. Here comes Detweiler. Hillary Butler given chase. Deadweiler to the 40 and tripped up by David Kilpatrick. They get a first down. Oregon down to the 37 of Washington. Not good. bad for a guy with a bad ankle. Good call. Jamal Fontaine uh, re either went to sleep or was on an inside move because uh, he's gone. Watch Jamal. You know, he's the guy, the only guy back here that can get this stopped. And uh, I have a feeling maybe Jamal might have been fooled on that. A good job by Willie Tate. He got a piece of two Huskies. This is a, a good drive for Oregon because Washington had just got the momentum. The crowd's back into the game, and they've marched from their own 20. First and 10 in Husky territory. Ball on the 37-yard line with both receivers to the right side. And really Tate coming to the left as he throws right over the middle. Hairston is there for the interception. Well, Danny again threw into double coverage there and going to McLemore trying for the home run ball and you know, say what if but uh, he's just got to read that coverage a little bit better. Yeah he didn't have him there. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. So. so two interceptions in the end zone for Washington and one at their own five. And this is a young man who came in with only six interceptions all year and he has four today. And Danny had a lot of time there. I mean that's triple coverage. Yeah. Talked about trying to get Willie Tate back in the game. They did on the one play. When Oregon gets the ball back, they might try to free Willie. <laughs> but a bing, but a boom. First and ten from the twenty. And Napoleon, after a lot of improvising on his own and some good hits up front, gets about seven yards. 
And here's where Washington, I think, could really take advantage of their size up front. They've got an eight-point lead. They're late in the third quarter. They can just wear on that Oregon defense. I look at the guys on the Oregon defense. So they're minus two of their starting defensive linemen in this situation. So why not pound on them and pound on them? Well, you've already rushed for 217 yards in basically two and two quarters and ten minutes. I might say that the uh, comment on P.A. Emerson, he had his defensive lineman about 10 yards off the ball that time. <laughs> yeah, he did. To Bryant Jackson to about the 40-yard line. He likes that uh, right guard position. He wants to play. Second and three. Conwell, is it picked off? No. Coda, very close. Conwell, he's got some great speed, hasn't he? If he can hold on to that ball, he's fast. Again, this is a play that uh, burned us in the Rose Bowl a couple of times. Um, fake to the strong side, come back to your tight end. Uh, I'll say this, uh, Lewis had excellent coverage. Sure did, Dante Lewis, the free safety. The ball is in the air a long time. Mm -hmm. It's still yeah. alive. That's alive at that point. point. You see yeah. Cota flying out. Ernie had a shot at it. Jack Cota had a shot at it. I mentioned earlier, Ernie has four catches coming into this game, and he's averaging almost 28 per, so he hits big when he does hit it. E.J. McCarthy, the wide receiver on the right now on third and three. Kaufman trying to get a first, does, and is out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Dante Lewis again on the play defensively. Good individual ability on that play. Romeo Bandison with the penetration early. Kaufman gets off and gets it enough to get outside. Watch 97 come underneath here, but Napoleon Kaufman gets outside and a nice jock once blocked once again by Matt Jones. To open up a snuff of a seam over the 100 yard mark. Huskies don't lose very often when Napoleon Kaufman gains over 100 yards. About 18, 19 straight, something like that now, when one of their running backs hits 100 in terms of victory. Kaufman slicing back against the grain where Ernest Jones meets up with him as he's up near the 40 yard line. About a three yard gain for him. So a good day for both running backs for the Huskies. You know Brian and Bob. We'll make sure too and mention that Damon Hewitt is back in the game at quarterback. Got some air back in his lungs. One of the problems, Todd, is that uh, you see three of the secondary guys are leading tacklers for the Ducks, yeah. and that's not a good sign. No. <laughs> You are looking at second down and seven. This quarter going fast. We're down to the three minute mark already. Kaufman again. Not much. Danison stayed home very well. Closed down. And Massey got underneath the, yes. the pulling guard there, too. And, and that's a couple of times Oregon's tried to go underneath that block. They've missed a couple. Rich Rule has missed a couple coming inside there. But this time, Massey. He's got the speed, and they missed him inside last week. Arizona State ran the ball pretty well, in fact, better than anybody has done against Oregon this year. He looks familiar he's, to he's you, limping, He's limping now, too. Yeah, that's a guy. That's a guy. I'm, we'll <laughs> seen, get him. <laughs> you've seen those headlights before, haven't you? <laughs> Boy, that hurt, I'll tell you. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. It's all right. He's it's okay. down there. You're up here. It's okay. Third down and six. I'll bet it hurt. Third and six from right on the 40. And the shotgun. Kaufman trying to get him out of the open, let him do his thing. And he's got his first down to the 48-yard line. Eugene Jackson in on the tackle. Good job there by Napoleon Kaufman. He gets the ball in the open field on the throw from Hewitt and recognizes that I got three guys. I'm not going to out-juke three guys. I can eat a first down. I'm just going to go straight forward and hope I get it, and he does. Byron Rockwell also went on the tackle, the senior out of Davis, California. Add linebacker. Minute 53. Clock going here in the third. First and 10 from the Husky 48-yard line. Bino. Hey, he makes the most of it. As he gets to midfield, a two-yard gain, but it was by committee. Stay as Dante Lewis and Chad Cota make the stop. Just stays with the pile. Well, and that's a sign of a good running back, isn't it, Don? You stay with those blockers until you have to go. Stay with 85, too. That's always a good sign. <laughs> yeah, no but I give Oregon defense a lot of credit. You know, they they just uh, they they kept leverage. They kept they stayed in their position, even though they were blocked, but uh, made a tough one until they could get some help out there. Second down and seven. Ball just into duck territory. There you go. Toss sweep. Bino. 
and tripped up and tripped up very well. It was indeed Rockwell coming in again, the senior. He only had five tackles coming into this game, Todd. As I mentioned, Asher has gotten almost all the reps there inside, along with Massey and Rule. Rockwell is a very intelligent young man. He's got almost a four-point average. Wants to uh, get into the stock market business. I don't know if this is a good time to do what a that. Mistake. But <laughs> it better be. Just so he's using somebody else's money, not his, right? Uh, don't knock that profession. Uh, Chuck is right. a stockbroker, uh, well, among other things. We know. <laughs> it better be good. Third down at seven. Not sure where he's going now. Tries to throw it underneath to get it to Theron Hill. Flag goes down. Anderson with a little extracurricular, maybe. Well, why do you throw a flag on that? That late, unless he. And he went right to the official. It was over by Theron Hill. There was no flag. There was an eligible receiver in the area. Fourth down. Well, why didn't he see that before he threw the flag? Because he didn't see him. <laughs> Under the uh, mechanics well, the almost, of the referee, his responsibility is to throw it, and then the other officials help him on the play. Oh. But if you're Damon Heward, I don't think you want to even throw that ball. He's going to hold on. Oh, no, God, with this score, and it's a big game, close game. John Wardell getting back to punt, and Brian Brown. There he is for Oregon. Damon wanted to go to Mark Bruner that time, and the Duck linebackers were all over him. Wobbly punt. They get a good roll, and it looks like it's going to be an Oregon roll. Touched Leif Johnson right there, didn't it? So it'll go out of bounds at the 21 yard line. It'll be Oregon ball. As Leif Johnson, he's usually, he's due for something special on special teams. He does usually at least once per week. In fact, right now, he's got eight total tackles on special teams, three unassisted, and a fumble recovery. All of that coming on punt and kickoff coverage. Oregon hasn't had many opportunities to return punts. They've all hit the ground yeah. and rolled, so Leif has at least been taken out of the game. Danny O'Neill with four interceptions today. A rough one for him, but he's still in it. First and ten from the 21-yard line as the this will be the last play of the third quarter. Well, Jamal Fontaine fooled again. I, I, you know, unless he's on a charge, he has no business in there. He's He's got the quarterback coming outside with the ball, and if they're running a fake the other side, he's not going to stop the play. Pass was to Josh Wilcox, the backup tight end to Willie Tate. Richie Chambers on the play defensively. End of the third quarter. Huskies up by eight and will return conference play. As they went in, and boy, that California dead to rights with that 30-point lead and then lose it and then lose it home to USC a week later. Keith Gilbertson felt the same thing, though, losing to Washington and then a week later getting spanked by Washington State up in Pullman without his starting quarterback. First and 10 on the 34-yard line for the Ducks as they trail by eight. And we begin the fourth. Fumble. Huskies have it. Was that Whittle? Yep. Boy, we talk about his lack of fumbling and ability to hold on and... Not sure he ever got it. I'm not sure he ever got it. I think you're right. Yeah. Reggie Reeser on the recovery. He looks like just as the ball is handed to him, somebody gets either an arm in there or the exchange between he and O'Neill isn't good. Let's check. It was a late shift. He never got it. He uh, either didn't. Never did, uh, never got it. He didn't either wrap it up or O'Neill didn't put it in right. Looks like it hit his right forearm, maybe. Yeah. Sometimes being injured and not practicing much and playing much uh, causes of that also. First and ten in for the Huskies after another turnover. Unofficially, that's five now. Matt Jones, and he's slowed down by Bandison, trying to go outside. The stiff arm doesn't quite work as Isaac Walker makes the stop. In the third quarter, Boy, the rushing is really going towards the Huskies now. And total yardage and the turnovers, that was indeed the fifth one. And the penalties, again, still a major part of the game. And Oregon has been averaging, you look at total yards, they've been averaging almost 440 yards a game. So Washington has done a good job. Second down and seven. Look out! Oh, my goodness! Merry Christmas, Isaac Walker, and he can't hold on. You talk about a sight-adjusted play, and they didn't sight the same thing. <laughs> they might have sighted the same thing, but they certainly didn't adjust the same way. Wow. Woo! 
Uh, Teron was saying, boy, have I got me six going deep, and uh, that cornerback out there said, I've got me six going the other way. You saw Damon look off to the left, and... Oh! That was not supposed to be sight adjusted if Damon's looking left. Wow. Third down and seven. This time receivers to the left side. Kaufman. That's a great play by Chad Coe. Wasn't it though? Home. <laughs> He's supposed to stay on that hash mark, and that's right where he was. And Napoleon gave him a couple of hips left and right. And Coda did not bite. Nobody left. He was a guy. He was it. To, had to stay behind it. Watch. They play fairly well block at the point of attack, but Chad Coda keeps everything on his inside shoulder. Good play, Chad Coda. So it's fourth and two. You got a long field goal attempt here, which would give you more than a touchdown advantage. An indecision by Washington, they may want to go for it, uh, not knowing if they can boot the ball that long. The decision, the decision has not been made yet. They're going to let the clock run down and take a take a timeout, but use up as much clock as they can. Huskies have called a timeout. By the way, Napoleon Kaufman, 17 carries, 128 yards. We'll be back. But a little better day than it was when we started at 12.30 this afternoon. Don, this is when the head coach works for his pay. <laughs> Fourth and two, there's 70,000 people that are going to second guess this. They all want him to go for it, but they also want him to make it. And, and what do your assistant coaches tell you? Uh, they don't say a word. <laughs> you want some help, and they, the microphones are quiet. <laughs> nobody upstairs, nobody, nobody home. I like this call, though. I like this decision. Uh, it's a long field goal. Get what you can. Maybe make it. Leave it there if you don't make it. They need two yards on fourth down. Jones and Kaufman in the backfield. One wide receiver, two tight ends. And Eric Bjorkson at quarterback gets the first down. Not a bad move either, putting him in a quarterback for the play. If you know you're going to run the option, put in the guy that can run the option. Alabama puts in David Palmer on a two-point conversion play. The Huskies put in Damon er, and er, Eric Bjornsson. A good play fake inside to Matt Jones. Keeps the linebacker inside long enough for Eric Bjornsson to get to the corner and turn it. And again, you can see that the Oregon defense worked hard on stopping the tailback. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely, there's and no pitch there. And, and in that particular situation, it hurts them because yeah, sure. it opens up a three or four yard seam. Jeff Sherman on that tackle. And interestingly enough, it is still Bjornsson at quarterback. Kaufman. Oh, my. Pops his way through. Sherman gets him. He's just short of the first down to the 13, 12 and a half yard line. Stayed with the blockers there, Don. Give, me, though. Give him credit. He stayed right with those big guys. Watch number 22, Matt Jones. Looks like he's got a number eight tattooed on his back right here. Great job by Napoleon Kaufman. Got the right hand between the two and the two. Good job by everybody else up front, keeping people off of him. Pete Pearson got two blocks. Give him credit. Big day, 136 yards. Better take his line out to dinner tonight. Second down and three. Jones should have the first down, and it'll be first and goal for Washington. Come back to it now. You know, it's a, it's a companion play to the option, and, uh, you know, make him stay at home. And Bjornsson staying in at quarterback throughout this series. This is good. Good experience for Eric. Well, his threat to run here brings an added dimension. I mean, Hewitt can run the option, but, I mean, uh, Bjornsson... Uh, with him in there, I think it's more of a threat to run. Yeah, a little difference in 40-yard yeah. days time. About 4-5 to 4-8. I'll bet. And some sore ribs. 4-5 ribs, too. Eric's still in there. This is helpful after trying to struggle in that game against UCLA. Kaboom! Conveniently got down quick. Oh, that was third and about a half a yard. I, I, yeah, yeah, that was third down. Does he get the first down? I don't think so. So he didn't get the first. I thought Matt Jones had it easily on that last play, so it was not. This fourth down decision a little bit easier than the last one. The play call may not be as easy. Do you run the option again? I think maybe the quarterback snake might be uh, the thing to go back to. Don't risk the handoff. Fourth and I want to fake the less dive. Than I want to fake the dive and throw it. Go for all the tight end. Spec Frolic out to the left. And the big guy, Bjornson, just simply tucks it under and goes in for the first down. You quick snap it. Just fall forward. Got more yards than they did last time they did that. They're getting better. First and goal for Eric Bjornsson. Still hard to get used to Jim Lambright walking the sidelines. I haven't seen him down there for a long time. It's just, uh, it's real different. Spent a lot of time in the press box. Sure did. 
First and goal from the nine yard line. As Crawley comes out to the left side for Coach Lambright. And the double tight end. Kaufman right up the belly. Down to the two. Maybe the one and a half yard line. Sherman and Coda on the stop. Tom Gallagher, the strong side tackle, leading a pretty good rush out there for Napoleon. After the sight adjustment that was maladjusted, have they thrown a pass in this drive since then? I think they've decided that they're going to run this ball in the end zone. <laughs> they're doing a good job of it. Nice blocking by Kessie on that last play, too. He had screened off his side quite well. Second and goal from the two. Kaufman over the top. And the second TD. Kaufman paid for that one. They may not have thrown any passes, but they're putting the ball in the air. <laughs> yeah, unless you're one of those uh, Patriot missiles, it's tough to defend that one. And wow. I think the uh, the injuries to the Oregon defensive front are really taking its toll now. Uh, and now you're going to see uh, you're going to see a shootout. Now Danny O'Neill's going to take the ball it. and put it up. So it's going to get exciting. Napoleon Ouch. lands right on his back. Ouch. It hurts all the way up here. <laughs> Killing me. <laughs> At 20 to 6, Hansen can extend the lead and does so. So at 10-15 remaining here in the fourth quarter, Huskies extending it to a 21 to 6 margin. We'll be back. Fifty Bailey, he was basically standing up and Bandis in 97 was coming down the line, so they must have been trying to do something different because those two guys didn't have their noses down to the turf. A lot of time eaten up by the Huskies. Quarterback trying to weather a coach's dream when you can have a four or five minute drive. You know, I think the frustrating thing for Oregon is they felt coming into this game, Oregon, uh, Washington had to run the football today with Heward being questionable, and Washington, to their credit, has been able to run the football. 267 yards so far. Burwell and Whittle. Burwell leaves it there on the end, as in Washington. So it'll be first and ten on the 20 yard line for Danny O'Neill and the Oregon Ducks. Is that Danny O'Neill and Oregon going to have to throw the ball a little bit. You're the defensive coordinator. Jim Lambright still the defensive coordinator. You know they're going to throw it. Do you send more people anyway? But you've been susceptible to the big play when you do that. I mean the decision he has to make is do I go ahead and, and play soft to keep away from the big player? Do I send people because I know they're going to throw it? Coming in I think they felt like they could handle the receivers. But we'll see. You know, they've got uh, Willie Tate out here at the bottom to play some wide receiver for them. Big target. Bit wider is at the top of your screen. There's the pitch to Burwell. And Richie Chambers closing in well. Got some help from Reggie Reeser as well, who closed in extremely well. He had a good call, and I thought, but uh, the Huskies went too deep, so that meant that Reggie could come up quickly and support from the outside. The play block well from the inside, but with one linebacker out there, and Reggie Reeser, a good job of forcing from the corner. Chambers can run. He got out there. Good shape. Good speed. I didn't know they raised kids to run that fast from Lake Stevens. They had to get to the dock because the boat was leaving to go water skiing, Don. And that's in Snohomish County. Snohomish County. Second down and nine. Good. <laughs> O'Neill still looks and finally has to go out of bounds. Now we might have a penalty here. Let's see. No. Uh, they usually get that one called. Uh, yeah. I'm amazed they didn't call it. Especially on the Oregon sideline, but you don't see any. Rich Brooks surprised isn't the Marco. about halfway up the whistle on one of those officials. Marco, I believe that was was that Cedric White or Demarco Farr that? Uh, I think it was Demarco. Demarco, you see Demetrius Devers here. This ran oh, oh, Mr. Burwell. Burwell will get credit. He made the block and got him out of the play. Yeah. See Demarco Farr continues to pursue and right here, and here everybody. Oh just, my, I can't believe they didn't call I think that. maybe he was trying to. It looked a little better on the play uh, replay than it did. Uh, looked like maybe he was trying to back off a little. That's what the officials look for. No touchdown. Four interceptions coming into the game. He had a almost a four to one ratio the other way. USC's been the nemesis for Danny in the past. He's really struggling today. Third and seven. Pressure. Demarco far. Flag goes down in the backfield. Iwaliko also took a look at him, and more than likely, as Demetrius Devers gets him out of bounds, it'll be a hold on the Ducks. Wait and see. Awesome. Pressure in the middle from DeMarco Farr. 
flushes the bird. Yeah, but see if O'Neill could have stepped up into the pocket here. Uh, well, he got, maybe not. Maybe not. No, they had a good twist. Evil Eco was coming home. Yeah. Yeah. Demetrius Devers comes very close to getting another flag in almost the exact place. The official right on the right on the play does not throw the flag. So Tommy Thompson will come out in front, and Bino Bryant holding on the offense. Decline. Fourth down. That flood's getting hoarse. He's worked hard today. Bino Bryant will be back to receive. DeMarco, eighth in the conference in tackles for loss. He had 10 coming in. With four sacks to go along as Tommy is back on his four yard line. Bino only 34 yards back. He's not counting on a big punt from Tommy Thompson. He's playing the wind. Going too. into the wind, yeah. Short punt. He's got a shot. Trying to get that to opening gate. Oh! My goodness, what a great tackle by Coda. He'd still be running. Well, this week, Oregon has put a lot of their first teamers on the special teams. And Chad Coda is one of those guys. Ernest Jones was also in there. And 30, excuse me, Todd. 32 yard punt, 14 yard return on this. But what a play by your pal, Coda. Right. He, he takes care of the blocker, makes the tackle. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. There are a lot of guys this league would not have made that right. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been a touchdown against some other teams. Coda, as I said earlier, the Pac-10 Player of the Week for his hard work against Arizona State last week. Down. Eric Bjornsson stays at quarterback. First and ten. Wise move when you've got the lead and you've got a banged-up quarterback starter. Bjornsson showing some of the speed he's got to get away from Ernest Jones. And Jones came in with his six sacks and leading the Ducks this year. I think that would have been a sack if Damon had been in there. Oh, I think so, too. That kind of acceleration to get out of trouble. A change of pace on first down also. We saw that virtually all of that last drive was running plays. This time they come out and say, well, we, we wanted you to think we were going to run it the rest of the game, but we might throw it a time or two. <laughs> I guess the point I was trying to make, this is really helpful for Eric because he had to go into that UCLA game so suddenly. It's such a critical time. It was really tough on him. And good pressure by UCLA. Bino carries down near the 30-yard line. Rich Rule had his hands wrapped around Bino's leg for the tackle. Clock continues to roll. 8.50, 8.49 here in the fourth quarter as, my goodness, folks, the sun is out. Hard to believe. It always comes out in homecoming. <laughs> Oregon defensively now has four players in there on the field now that were starters in the first game. Just four. Amazing. Yeah. Had Jerry Measure been hurt at all coming into this game? No. Third down and three. Here's the pitch to Bino. Well played. And coming up very well was again Jeff Sherman. Sherman was the leading tackler in the first half with eight and he's got at least that many again here in the second half. The loss on the play also makes a field goal attempt if they tear it. Now they're going to punt. Going to punt the ball from the 32 yard line. It'll be a 49 yard field goal with the wind at his back. This is basically not a vote of confidence in Travis Hansen. Bino had 70 yards in that first half, and then he'll take away from his net. Brian Brown. How does he field goal attempt? I'm disappointed. He must have been a place kicker, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> Wardell trying to add to his collection of a half dozen inside the 10 to come to rest, but not this time. I think Jim was trying to pin them back there, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> felt like he maybe had enough points. <laughs> I guess. Plus, if you get a field goal block, you know, a lot of times it goes the other way. Uh, in the end zone. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Keep going, Coach. You're on a roll. I, just re I remember in situations like that, I go and say, doesn't he want any points? Doesn't he want any points? I say, Chuck, get back, back in. Keep your leg warm. <laughs> we'll get to you later. <laughs> we need an extra point, huh? <laughs> First and ten for Danny O'Neill. He's got seven and a half minutes to go. Little and my goodness. Justin Thomas finally made a play he that sure I did. he's capable of making. That's a good job by Justin. Justin, Justin the sophomore from Ferris High School, as we mentioned, over in Spokane, up on South Hill. People from Spokane know where that is. It's a good job of shedding a block and just coming right up field. 
Whittle was the man who impressed me more than any other duck in the game last year against Washington. I think Don hit on it uh, when Ricky Whittle just has not had the practice time consistently with an ankle injury. And he needs, some guys don't need as much practice as other guys. And Ricky needs the practice time. Second and 13 after the loss of three. O'Neill now fighting for his life as Thomas again brings him down. This time he brings the quarterback. He had Whittle open too if he could have just uh, had enough time to get the ball to him. Well, and you wonder now if his thought process is completely yeah. changed from what it was in the first quarter. Is he looking for white jerseys or purple jerseys? Ink Kaliaga is back after that broken leg at the beginning of training camp. Highly, highly regarded linebacker. Boy, that's great to see, Don. Well, he's an excellent football player, too. He's one of the kids from Hawaii we got from the Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got a lot of them over there that play. It's a fertile ground for recruiting. Uh, playing on the weak side, weak side linebacker. On the right side of the field. Ooh. And O'Neill is hauled down by Jamal Fontaine. <laughs> DeMarco <laughs> Farr just stopped. <laughs> Thought he read screen, comes to a dead stop, does DeMarco Farr. Well, he said, I was in there so quick, it had to be a screen. <laughs> That's right. Couldn't have gotten here that fast on purpose. A good defensive lineman will sense that. If it's too easy, something's wrong. Yeah, your young freshman uh, might make a mistake like that. You know, figure they're supposed to be in there, but he's a seasoned veteran. Thompson back on his own six. Hang time has been outstanding today by Tommy and Bino Bryant hoping to bust one. His last one, a 14-yard return. Lamar Lyons close. Fair catch at the 46. So Thompson does his job. And Coda was there ready to tackle Mr. Bryant if he had not. Be right back. Washington, Yorton still a quarterback going to Mark Bruner, his tight end. A little bit behind him as he was defended by Rich Rule. Trying to get the ball to Mark, uh, get him, bring him into the game, give him a little work. A lot of regulars still in there. First unit on offense on the line Peterson, Van Nivell, Patrick Kessie. Jesse, a big, big man. Gallagher there still. They're all big. <laughs> yeah, relatively speaking and literally. We've got three of the five offensive line starters over three bills. Second down and ten, and they've blocked well today. There's the pass. Is that Crawlick? Well, I'll tell you, Joe, with a great catch. Isaac Walker with a solid hit. And Joe's taking his share of hits this year. Joe takes them every day in practice. He, even he does. If you're in sweats, he'll go down there and you know fall and run into the bench. And, uh, he'll just he'll concentrate on football. He wants to catch every ball that's thrown to him. And you see the arm strength of Eric Bjornsson and the tackling strength of Isaac Walker. Isaac's he's had a good game. Quite today. the hitter. He's had some licks. And he's playing with uh, a neck that's been a problem for him. Jim Lambright with an attaboy to him. Good hit by Walker. It'll be third down and three. Bachman. Oh, good penetration. Yes, the blitz and Byron Rockwell again, the senior out of Davis, trips him up. So it'll be fourth down. Keeps the clock rolling, 415, 414. So lots of people coming, just lots of bodies. Matt Jones cuts Rockwell, but Rockwell's able to flip himself over enough, enough to get his legs in the play. John Wardell, a busy man here. And John and Tommy Thompson both earned their letters today. Brown back to receive on his 14. Well, it looks like they're going to come after it. This crowd's been pretty quiet today. Brown from his 11. Ernie Conwell forcing him to go inside. And number 57, John Fiala with a tackle. There he is. Fiala, the Richard freshman out of Lake Washington High School and Bellevue. 339 here in the fourth quarter. You Husky fans will want to tune in Thursday evening for the latest edition of Husky Profile. Much, much more. Isn't it amazing how they 
can preserve film now, those things that they can do to keep those films alive from way back when Don James' first year? That's right. Sean Burwell carrying on the last play. It's Nate Galiaga got the tackle. They say one of the good things about him are his instincts. That he uh, is able to sniff out a play extremely well as a linebacker. Second and three. Then has the ability to get there once he smells it. <laughs> Hope that leg is healthy. Tate again. That's two of those. Virtually the same play where he's by the first down marker and is conscious of making sure he gets the first down and the ball get through his hands. Richie Chambers, a good job getting out on Mr. Tate. Footsteps this time by Richie. Last time it was Reggie Reeser. Usually footsteps don't uh, bother him. Yeah. He's uh, always been sure-handed, but you know, no matter how good you are, you're going to have days where it doesn't go right for you. How many wet games has Oregon had? I know it rained last week at ASU. That was it. That's it. Yeah, it's been pretty nice this year. Actually, it, the rain stopped pretty well once yeah. the game started. Yeah. Tracks even almost dry. Thomas can't get him. Giving chase, gets a couple of breaks. Still going. Uh, Steve Martin looked like he wanted to carry him to the goal line. I thought he was going to. Justin Thomas finally with a tackle. That was impressive. Very impressive. That was a lot of, a lot of purple guys that had a shot at Danny O'Neill. Not only escapes, but gets enough yardage for first down. Oregon continues in the hurry-up offense, but there's Mikey Willico, Cedric White. Three guys. David, David Ritchie, Ritchie yeah, Galeaga, Steve Ooh. Springstead. Move on Springstead. Steve Harden beauty. tucks him under his arm, does a good job. Good quarterback leverage there. First and ten. Interception. As it goes to Russell Hairston, his second today. Well, when you're trying to make big plays, when you're down by two scores and less than three minutes to go in the ball game, sometimes you do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. Pro balls, places you probably shouldn't. And Russell Hairston feels good about number two today. Danny O'Neill has time to do what he wants to do. But overthrew, he either overthrew Ricketts or underthrew McLemore. I'm not sure which. Yeah, you, you don't want to, no guesswork on flat passes. No. You know, you're either there or you're not. You, you might work down the field in the deep routes, but the, or not in the flat. Graziani, the backup quarterback, we may see him here in the last few minutes. We'll wait and find out. First and ten, Huskies still throwing the ball as McCarthy gets his first reception today. DJ, who had the touchdown catch against UCLA last week, comes to heart. This man's about 6'8". I think they want to give uh, Eric Bjorkson some work throwing the ball. I don't think they're interested in scoring that much. They want to give Eric some work. Yeah, and if that was the case, Oregon wouldn't be calling timeout. But Oregon's trying to stop the clock with 2.28 to play. Steve Martin, offensive line coach with a headset. Now Levan on the left with Eric. Now very high on his running or his, his running combo, of course, with Bino and Napoleon Coffin, and he ought to know the people he coached at the NFL level. And Ron Boy, the linebacker. Thursday evening, tune in to Prime Sports Northwest for the latest edition of Duck Sports Journal. Join host Jerry Allen and Peg Reese for a half hour of news and features dedicated to Duck Athletics. That's Thursday, 11 o'clock on Prime Sports Northwest. Bet you get to read that occasionally, Todd. Every once in a while. Your broadcast. We should mention that when the Huskies now go down to Corvallis to play Oregon State, Jimmy Jones will be the host play-by announcer. And probably have a committee of four or five or six people in the booth <laughs> for that one, too. But <laughs> Well... <laughs> He'll take over, and I'll stay home and watch the game on TV. I'm staying home also with you, Don. Are you? Yes. Let's go golfing. I'm for it. Okay. <laughs> Second down and four. Leon Neal gets a carry as the flag drops on the line of scrimmage. With 2.23 to go. That'll drive coaches nuts when your nose tackle, nose guard, right over the ball, jumps offside. I think that's his kind of responsibility <laughs> to watch the ball. Yeah, kid, you're not supposed to go on sounds. Just look at that little <laughs> pigskin. Side yeah. on the defense. First down. The uh, five interceptions by O'Neill today is not a school record, by the way. The school record is six. Set by... A pretty good football player, George Shaw, against the Huskies back in 1952. George Shaw, one of the all-time great Oregon quarterbacks. So even those guys have bad days, and that guy had a great day. Yeah, Mr. Nelson and I, we correct ourselves. That's three interceptions for Harrison today. First and ten, Yorkson. 
Looking to pass all the way. Oh, what a near catch anyway by Janowski. Dave almost got the fingers wrapped around it. He was defended by Jeff Sherman. He almost caught the back of the ball there. Yes. Yes. Excellent hands for a young receiver. Great. Second down and 10. Jordson, they give him time as they roll out. Not enough time. Now he's got a lot of room. Looks for a block. Gets away from one man. The blocker, a flag rather, back in the backfield of all places. As Jordan shows some savvy getting down to the 19 yard line. Brian Collins on the tackle, but it's a clip on the dog. Uh, two, two things about this clip. One, it must have been really late, and one, it must have been well off the ball because the flags came down well, and it must have been very obvious as well. Flag thrown way over here when Eric Bjornsson is way over there. You see the clip right, right there on 56. That's what they're going to call because that's where the flags ended up. Pete Gallagher getting the chance. This is tough on offensive linemen. Oh, yeah. You don't know where the quarterback is. Defensive guys can see him. Yeah. The only way you can get away with the clip is if you maintain contact and the defender turns his back, then you're okay. Otherwise, is the penalty walked off from the point of the infraction? <laughs> because they well, got, must be. Because yeah. they've got first and, and more than 25. They just backed up about 30 yards. I think it should be able to run a minute 49 off the clock now. They've got three plays <laughs> and about 53 yards to go. Morgan so, with one timeout left probably won't use it. Janowski and McCarthy are the wide receivers here in the latter going. And Leif Johnson is the fullback. There's the pitch to Neal. It's a lead block by Leif Johnson. Tries to stay in bounds and is absolutely tattooed. Leon Neal, the ball carrier. As Leon Neal carried. And we think it was Collins with a hit. Yes, Brian Collins, the strong safety out of Los Angeles. Was Rich Brooks anywhere near that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. pile? The checkoff by Eric Jorgensen gets the ball. A great block by Leif Johnson. Then an accidental block like Leif Johnson. Oh, oh look at all those guys on the sideline. And then be on your toes. That looks like bowling alley number seven down at the uh, First Street in Maine. Leon Neal at the tie -E bowl. <laughs> Third down at 13. Remember the penalty, the clipping penalty. That's why it's still third and 13 after the long run. Wrapped up from behind. Yes. Where's the ball? Play. The ball. Play I can't it find on. it. Yeah. Bandison is the one who got in there and caused fits for Bjornsson. And all of a sudden there was no football. And it'll be Oregon ball here with a minute and a half to go. Well, maybe Danny O'Neill can tie that record. <laughs> <laughs> He's spoken like a true Husky, huh? <laughs> well, with the, the games these two teams have played against California, it's, nothing's totally out of the realm of possibility, but good effort by Bandis, and he spun out. There it is. And got around him, and uh, Jorgensen lost, and then nobody can find it. Nobody Look even at that. Been laid there for. Nobody even knows there's no a host to find it. And then everybody saw it. Bandison limped out the last time. You say he has a sore shoulder. Now he sore he shoulder, yeah. off the field the last series. Uh, tough guy. Well, you know, at this stage of the season, almost all your players have some kind of nick and bruise and bumps and bruises. Nobody's 100 percent. If you're not hurt, you're not playing. You're not hard. playing. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Minute and 30 to go. 21 to 6 on a late Sunday night as you watch this broadcast or Monday night with Oregon's broadcast. Willie Tate with a reception and he's stopped by Incaliaga up at the 45 yard line. Flag is down in the backfield. Valuable time for Aliaga. It's a late hit or a hold, one or the other. Back where O'Neill passed. Roughing the passer on the defense. Tap on 15 yards. Automatic first down. You think that might come up in the meeting that maybe that wasn't the smartest play to make? Especially with a minute 30 left. A minute 30 left. The other team can, with two scores, get back into this game. A two-point conversion on one of two touchdowns. Well, they're playing a lot of young players, and they're trying to make an impression you know, on the coaching staff. A good one or a bad one? Well, they just made a bad one, but it was full speed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, full speed, that's right. First and ten, trying to set up a screen. Here's Burwell. Gets a couple of good blocks inside the 30, and Josh Moore is there. Along with Aliaga. 
Aliaga comes into the ball game, and we've mentioned him at least three times on three plays. Three I was going to say it might be time for some of the first teamers to come back in just to settle things down a little. Not maybe not all your guys, but <laughs> I don't think they want to give up the score. No. Not with a minute nine to go. You're right. And you do see some more familiar numbers. O'Neill fumbles and fumbles out of bounds as Scott Greenlaw got the hit. Scott always does those little things so well. Oh, he's a solid young man, solid player, good special teams player. Works hard, got faster this year. There you see him come up. Good leverage. Ricketts, the receiver. And Greenlaw had that interception against, uh, was it California? No, I was trying to think San Jose State. And they were trying to isolate the young man, and kind of he didn't do a good job against Garcia, the quarterback for the Spartans. Came up with a pick. Second down and three. Burwell trying to get the first, and in the meantime, the clock keeps going. Stops now. Huskies in no hurry to get off the pile. Oregon calls their final timeout with 53 seconds to go. I don't think he got first down yardage. Well, you get a quick touchdown. Go for two. You get it. Now it's 14 to 21 14. On side kick. kick. You hate Go to for see. two again. Not a lot of scoring today, but here's what happened. A 22-yard field goal for Tommy Thompson to open things up in a 3 to nothing lead. At halftime, it was 7-3 to after Bean O'Brien's 35-yard touchdown run. Thompson with a 44-yarder moved the Ducks within one, uh, one point. And then a 58-yard run by Napoleon Kaufman extended the lead 14-6. to and then finally Coffin with his second, this time leaping over the pile for a 21 to 6 lead. One yard run, and we're here now with 53 seconds to go in the ball game and a 21 6 lead. Jim Lambright talking it over with his defense, and I would imagine with some eyebrows that are pretty low to the eyeballs, if you know what I mean. Pretty serious. It's down here for those youngsters a chance to make some plays that can make a difference. It's a gutsy call on Jim's part. I, I think I'd rather be talking to my first team defense right here because of uh, the potential of scoring and uh, as we've talked about to go for two the onside kick. This pro this program is authorized under television rights granted by the University of Washington. Any publication reproduction rebroadcast or the use of the pictures descriptions of accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Third Sports game. Northwest is prohibited. Third down and one for Oregon. Two receivers to the left with Ricketts to the right. Looks to the right. Intercepted. Was that Aliaga? Uh, JJ Frank. Okay, JJ got it. Just coming in Hanson, rather. That must have been what Lambright told him in the huddle over there. Let's tip it and get an interception. <laughs> Go for A the record. Richard freshman from Kent and Kentwood High School. And that's a mighty big pick. Number six, seventh turnover of the day. And you're not going to win many games, as the Huskies know from the last two weeks, when you turn it over seven times. And the sixth pick for O'Neill, because that will go down as an interception. Oh, sure. Yeah, Danny's got to throw it, and it was tipped. It's, uh, J.J. Hansen uh, did an excellent job uh, hanging on to the football. It's a big one, six feet and 225. And that's about all you can do at this point is say, let's get on to the next week. First and 10, and they'll try to eat up the clock now. As Ted Starks at quarterback. Leif Johnson, the ball carrier. And Leif Johnson carrying. And that is Leif's first rush of the year, technically. He hasn't carried the ball. Caught a pass for a touchdown. Yep. I think Brian Collins made a couple of hits today. He is a physical player. That's what they like about him. He just uh, is a young guy that needs to learn where to be on certain plays. And when he learns to do that, he's going to be a force. He needs to know who to hit. Yeah. Stark, the Medford, Oregon product, coming up behind team captain Jim Novell at center, and he'll have one more snap of the ball. Leif Johnson <laughs> again Leif Johnson comes in to leave his mark and the game is over and Jim Lambright's Washington Huskies are at five and two coming back after the loss to UCLA to get an impressive win over Oregon the team with the number one total offense in the conference and doing very well at limiting it to 294 yards 96 rushing 198 passing 399 total yards for Lambright's offense. 
big win for for Jim. Uh, uh, you play uh, the, the Northwest rival games. Uh, they're just starting to get that series going, and uh, of course Jim's been involved in these 20 plus years. He knows he knows uh, the meeting, and uh, their big games are important games. And uh, this is a big win for for Jim and the Huskies. And they're never easy games either. No, this no. this is a very very typical. Prime